to Zimmerman. Major League start number seven. Got to get that ERA down. And Robbie's got to have a better first inning than he has the last few times. Bill Welke, the 10-year veteran, calls it ball one. Underway at 7.06 and mostly clear skies, 76 degrees. It's a beautiful night to play a ball game, watch a ball game, announce a ball game, and we wish those of you at home were here with us. It's just that perfect. A lot of great matchups in interleague play this weekend. Here's a 1 1 from Zimmerman way up high. 2 and 1 to Brian Roberts, who's hitting 289 on base average of 364. And from the left side, he's at 288. Now Zimmerman's having a hard time getting over the top of his fastball. Well, and I'm sure he's uh, really fired up. And when the, when the adrenaline is flowing and you have a live arm like he is, it's easy to overthrow. Line drive to right, and right there is Adam Dunn for the first out of the game. Let's give you the PNC Bank scouting report. This is seven, seven starts, so hopefully it is lucky. They've won three. They've lost three of his first six starts. One pitch at a time. Just take it easy tonight and don't press. You don't really know this American League lineup. They're pretty deadly, have a lot of firepower in there, so just take it slow, go through there, and test your fastball on a lot of these guys. See if they adjust to it. Next up for the Orioles, their budding 23-year-old star, Adam Jones. 364. And a good breaking ball by Zimmerman evens the count one ball, one strike. Jones came over, part of that seven-player deal with Seattle involving Eric Bedard a year ago, February 8th. Another heater by Zimmerman. One count, one ball and two strikes now the count. And here's the problem he's had in the first inning. Nearly two plus runs first inning every time he starts. And a one-two delivery. Got him looking on a fastball that touches the zone. Up and away, two outs. Jim Palmer has made his way from the field to the booth and Jim how good can Adam Jones be well he can be awfully good and uh, I'm not sure a 95 on the outside corner but... <laughs> well that's this kid though this kid throws hard and he's been having trouble getting through the first inning what do you what do you think when a kid is that young his seventh major league start why is he having trouble in the first inning well I think if you look at the American League Jabba Chamberlain yeah same kind of problems he, he's actually warming up an extra inning uh, to, it didn't help last night as he took a line right. drive. Jones hit him in the, the right leg with a with a pitch. But the, the bottom line is you just have to change and then make the adjustments. And how do you do that? You get experience. Exactly. Does do you simulate the first inning like the Yankees are doing with Java Chamber? Well, I think that's, I, I think that's one of the go. options. I, I've seen this kid pitch a couple of times, not as much as you have. He has terrific stuff. Yes, he does. And again, if you can out of your minor legs bring up kids like Jordan Zimmerman, Zimmerman, you got a chance to succeed. Because sooner or later, they're going to figure it out. 2-1 pitch and a foul tip into the glove of Josh Bard, 2-2. Two two. Mark Akis hitting 327. He's in the top three in the American League with 35 runs batted in. 2-2 two -two coming. And I think part of pitching at 7 o'clock, you know this, Rob, is the twilight. Take advantage of it. Hitters aren't seeing the ball. you got great stuff. Use it. That ball's well hit to center. Justin Maxwell way back there. And the young man from College Park handles it very well. A 1-2-3 top of the first. No problem for Zimmerman tonight.
Park. Beautiful evening. The Nats are hitting 276, third behind the Mets and the Dodgers. They're also third in the league in runs behind the Dodgers and the Phillies. Christian Guzman, one of the reasons, leads the league at 373. He's hit safely 17 of his last 18 starts. And from the right side of the plate, he's been an absolute terror this year. 18 for 39 at 462. Left-hander Rich Hill, 19 and 17 career. Two previous starts against the Nats as a Cub. One and one with a 5-2-5 ERA. And Guzman has actually walked twice already this year. Which we're having a hard time believing. So he actually has an on base average of 382. And a 1 0 to Christian, who will pop it up right side, hoping it gets out of play. It's near the dugout. Plenty of room for Aubrey Huff. Here's our PNC scouting report Jim Palmer on Rich Hill. Well, this will be his second start. He threw a lot of curve balls against Kansas City, pitched very well, ended up winning that game 3 to 2. So we'll call him Captain Hook. He needs to stop the starter's slide for the Orioles. Kind of a tongue twister there because they have not pitched well early and they've not allowed the Orioles to win. And to me, you can throw all the curveballs, but at the end of the day, to get deep in the game, you better command your fastball. Let's see how that goes. Nick Johnson's been hitting left-handers well this year. Nick's on a six-game hitting streak, hitting safely 11 of his last 12, and he's hitting 338. And since Manny Acta put him in the number two hole, he's over 340. He's going to left field a lot these days. That ball will slice out of play. And Bob, I wanted to talk to Jim about what Jim and I were just talking about off the air. With any pitcher, you need to establish your fastball. But when you were coming up back in your day, and obviously you're in the Hall of Fame and you've done so many wonderful things on, on the baseball field, your first few starts in the major leagues, what did your pitching coach tell you? Well, my first roommate was Robin Roberts. He had two, about 270 wins. I didn't have any. <laughs> <laughs> Big slow curveball, and Brian Roberts handles that one. Orioles defensively are 11th percentage-wise in the American League. Yeah, they have not played well, but they should. Reimold, he comes out of the minor leagues. He's in left. Jones, terrific center fielder. And, Rob, as you said, Marquecas already with, what, four or five assists four. last year, 17. And then you go to Mora. Astoris won a gold glove. Brian Roberts, one of the better all-around players. And Aubrey Huff has played well at first base. Didn't play there very much last year. And then tonight, Chad Moeller doing the catching as uh, Greg Zahn will at least initially take the evening off. And, of course, Jim, no DH in the National League ballpark. Is that Ty Wigginton affected mostly there? Well, you know, he had a home run last night and a double. So, again, he got the first and only pinch hit for the Orioles. Ryan Zimmerman's batting 353. Fifth best of the National League. He also sports an on base average of over 400. By far the best start of his major league career. And he's been on base for 39 consecutive games. This is only the 41st game of the year for Washington. Up among the major league hit leaders, he leads the National League, but Aaron Hill and Victor Martinez are off to great starts for the Blue Jays and Indians. One and two from Hill, who works the third base side of that rubber. Zimmerman right up the middle. That's where most teams play him, and that's why well played by Roberts. Each pitcher with a one, two, three first inning, and the battle of the beltways is underway.
Lottery news for you. Tonight's contestant, James Nensteel of Ocean City, and a chance to win $99 worth of American Classic scratch-off tickets from the Maryland Lottery for every Oriole home run hit tonight. You can have a chance to win as well. Enter by logging in to MassInSports.com. Top of the second, Jordan Zimmerman, a perfect fastball at the knees to Aubrey Huff, hitting 264. All right, so you're telling us about Robin Roberts, your first roommate. Oh, and he told me, and, and we've seen it from Jordan Zimmerman right here. Now, Aubrey Huff is one of the best fastball hitters in the American League. What does Jordan Zimmerman do well? Throws fastballs. Yep, and there you go, three of them. And again, Ryan you know, Zimmerman plays it perfectly. We were talking, and I've had a chance because you know, I don't do every game like you do, or like you do most of them. So I had a chance to see Jordan Zimmerman pitch. Saw him in San Francisco, saw him against the Phillies. And there's been one or two pitches or junctures in the game where he'll speed up the bat, come back with a breaking ball, did it to Jason Worth, threw fastballs right by him. So he's going to have to figure out what he does best. So again, not that you don't use all your pitches, but hitters are going to tell you how they get to your fastball. That is what he does best at his age and with his inexperience. And this ball up the middle, a couple of hops, Ronnie Belliard from the outfield grass. And another thing that he does so well, he throws a lot of strikes, but he never really changes the eye level. And he doesn't throw a lot of high fastballs. He doesn't throw a lot of stuff down in the dirt. And, and if he can maybe change the eye level, will that help him? Oh, of course. And he's going to have to, again, figure that out as his experience grows. You know, pitching, pitching coach Randy St. Clair is going to certainly try to help him do that. But at the end of the day, you got to figure it out by yourself. You know, you get all, you got a good pitching coach. He helps you with the mechanics. But, and again, they, you know, with Flores out, Azu Flores out, who's probably going to do the regular catching, you got to rely on tonight, Josh Bard. And you just pretty much go from there. Nationals have only won three games in the last two weeks since Flores got hurt. And that's a fastball that misses. 3-0 and on Nolan Reimold, a 25-year-old native of Greenville, PA, former second-rounder by the Orioles four years ago. He's made it to the major leagues, Jim, and what do you like about him so far? Well, it reminds me of Ryan Zimmer. <laughs> he stands a little bit like that. Obviously, not as much experience, but he's a good fastball hitter. Gets under that one, and that baby's going to give Baltimore the lead. That is over the bullpen. And Reimold's second major league home run, one nothing. And how many guys, Rob, have you seen come down the pike that when they get to the big leagues, can they hit the fastball? Because yep. you can adjust to breaking balls with experience and at bats, but if you can't hit the heater, then you're going to have a problem. Now this is a great hitter's count. Well, Northrop Grumman here on the spike, this the uh, strike track right there, and you just see the fastball over the heart of the plate. And once again, we've talked about this, Jim. That he throws so many fastballs in the zone, and these guys are getting too good of wood. He gave up 40 hits already in 34 innings coming into tonight. But again, you know, and you know, you, we all started as rookies coming into the big leagues. That's not a mistake. I mean, that's you know, he got behind a good fastball hitter and he hit it. Big deal. If you're going to do that regularly, then. But you're if going you're going to make a mistake, would you throw away? I mean, oh, get the fastball on the outside oh, part of the plate. Of course. But again, I think we've seen even veterans they have trouble pitching three and one in hitters counts where they like. Light hitting veteran catcher Chad Muller. He's eight for 41, batting 195. And Zimmerman's just given up his sixth home run of the year, and Rob's point well taken. Opponents' batting average coming into this game 301. And I think the difficulty for young pitchers is when you're throwing the ball by most of the hitters, which has been the case other than Nolan Rimo. If you're going to throw them breaking balls, they better be good ones. They better be out of the strike zone, out of the middle of the plate, or otherwise you're going to speed up the bat. 2 2 count. But again, 95 in the middle of the plate. You see enough of those. Leo Mazzoni, who was with the Orioles for a couple of years and had a great reputation down in Atlanta, he said, you know, you can start timing a jet plane if it comes across home plate often enough. <laughs> great point. 2 2 again. Locked him up on the breaking ball away. Orioles scored the first run of the Battle of the Beltways. Nolan Reimold, his second big league homer. Dunn, Willingham, and Belliard coming up.
inning. Now the rivalry between the Nationals and the Orioles is still in the growing stages, but Manny Acta likes what he's seen so far. Having the new stadium last year helped because I think uh, most of the Orioles fans wanted to come and see the new stadium too. But uh, it was a very good series last year at both ballparks. So uh, hopefully it picks up and people forget uh, where we are in the standings and just come out and root for both of their teams. Manny also said the more competitive these games are, the better the rivalry will be. Bottom of the second, first pitch, Adam Dunn to Nolan Reimold. One out, four in a row to start the game for Rich Hill. Well, I remember one of the early interleague battles I ever saw, and the teams did have a relationship with the World Series, was Kansas City and St. Louis. But they had a bench-clearing brawl one night <laughs> involving Johnny Damon, who was there at the time, and that took that to a whole nother level. I'm not saying that needs to happen here, but, Jim, somewhere along the line, something between the ball clubs gets the thing going. Yeah, I think how about winning? Exactly. I think that'll really change Absolutely. the dynamics. and. You know, it was a great article in the Washington Times yesterday. What the first, what 2005, the the two teams draw what 5.4 million people between them. The Nationals at that time were 81 and 81. Right. The Orioles hadn't lost as many years as they have at this point right now. So I think that'll change a lot of things. Got two great ballparks. You know, one of the greatest ballparks, as far as I'm concerned, Camden Yards, would, doesn't look like it's relatively new. First time I've had a chance to be here. Obviously, this is a vast improvement over the old bar, ballpark. So, again, if you start winning, people are going to get interested. At least that, that's my opinion. Josh Willingham, a 3-0 count. He's been driving the ball well. Would he have the green light here? He's taking all the way. Ten of his 13 hits in the month of May have gone for extra bases. No, and I, I think Jim makes a great point because there was really no rivalry between the Red Sox and Yankees till the Red Sox finally won that championship. And now, you know, two championships in four years, and now the Yankees are trying to play catch up. So now I really think that there's more of an interest between those two ball clubs. But if Washington and Baltimore start winning, and it's not going to be easy for Baltimore, they're in one of the toughest divisions in baseball, if not the toughest division, then it'll make it more interesting for them to come here or, or for the Nationals to go to Baltimore. And of course the Nats have to play 72 games a year against the Mets the Phillies the Braves and an always improving Florida ball club so tough division assignments for both of these franchises. Yeah the only good news I think if you know you're Stan Kasten or, or Mike Rizzo is that you know one of those teams isn't going to spend 200 million like the Yankees. Yeah <laughs> every year. Big slow breaking ball. Rich Hill's got that 12 o'clock, 6 o'clock hook. And he drops it in on Ronnie Belliard hitting a buck 82. And he'll throw it at any count. So again, it, it, you know, Hill's only 29. He's somewhat inexperienced last year. Back problems, just spring elbow problems. And you're going to get that curveball over in a fastball count, which is how he did it for the, the last two pitches. Gonna be pretty tough to hit, and this is what he did in Kansas City. Well, here's that last pitch right there. You see him get on top. Great follow through. Throw it into the zone, 71 miles an hour. Now, what kind of differential does he need to work on? I mean, it's pretty good. About 17 mile an hour between 88 and 71. Do you like that, or is that too slow? Well, I you know, it's funny. I, I used to sit on the bench when Ron Paranowski was the closer for Minnesota, and I but I said, why don't they just look for that curveball and hit it? And this is before the DH, and then one day I had to go up there and hit. It looked slow, but the spin wasn't slow. I mean, it's kind of like Mike Cuellar, yep. you know, who was arguably one of the best left-handers in baseball from 69 through 74. It looked slow, but when you're standing at home plate, it kept diving. And I think Rich Hill has one of those kind of curveballs. Runner going on the last pitch. He holds this time. And somehow that ball missed the foot of Ronnie Belliard. Two balls, two strikes. Famous Dave's legendary pit barbecue with our Exmo feature. Well, and you can see again a lot of elevation. Now, Ray, you know when you talk about Andy Pettit, he does that. Do you get over your front side? And of course, when you throw your shoulder that high and a runner goes on the first move, he's usually going to be successful when he's trying to steal a base. Belliard slaps it just foul outside third. Now, in your day, did you have a slide step? Oh, yeah. Did you try to kick it up yeah, to the and, base? and you don't use it very much. I think what you have to do and is just show it to them enough where they know you have it. And if you're left-handed, Mike Flanagan, uh, you know, won, won a Cy Young Award, he would actually, as a left-hander, start his hands first and then his leg. 
not simultaneously. So if they go on the first move, you still have a chance to throw over. But you really have to, to work on your, your ability to hold runners. I think most of the left-handers, they, they get to look at them. We didn't. And I think they would say, well, you know, I don't really need that good a move. But they're going on the time. Yep. The amount of time it takes you to get the ball to home plate and the amount of time the catcher gets it to second base. Belliard gets jammed, and he muscles the ball out to left center. Cesar is tourist, can't get it, and the Nationals have two on, one out. With the switch hitting catcher, Josh Bard, coming up. Ronnie Belliard's 11th base hit of the year. Breaks an 0 for 7. Yeah, I think you'll sacrifice a bat for a base hit, especially when you only had 10 coming into the game. Anderson Hernandez, we were told by many acted today, is available for spot duty after smacking his finger on the top of his helmet in frustration last night and dislocating the top of his pinky. <laughs> well, we've had nothing but bad luck, and as uh, Bob was saying, Jim, he runs down first base, he's frustrated about the out, and he smacks his head, and he pretty much busts up his uh, pinky finger on his throwing hand. Now, here's Josh Bard, who didn't have an RBI in one stint with the Nats and then several games into his second and then during the Pittsburgh series he had all four of his present four RBIs on the year playing in his 12th ball game veteran guy Yeah, we saw him a little bit in the American League when played for the Red Sox tried to make the Red Sox this year it was released and then signed with the Nationals and in 222 yeah he did not have a very good when I talked to a lot of the Red Sox when we were up in Boston he did not have a good spring throwing the ball but again, you know, switch hitter, I, I don't think really his hitting has ever been an issue. Yeah, he's always been a good offensive player. 265 career average coming into this year after seven years with Cleveland, Boston, and San Diego. And then again, if you're going to be the guy, because Veritech takes the night off on Wakefield, if you're going to catch Wakefield and ball's getting up there at 63 miles per hour, it's kind of you tough can't to have an arm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, well he was already traded arm. for Doug Mirabelli yeah. once yeah. because of that knuckleball. Bard, by the way, two for five from the right side this year. Hits it hard, and that's a double play ball. Best one you can get, a one hopper with a catcher running. And the Nationals are gone in the second. Stranding one so far. Orioles on the Rymold homer by one. Dibble mentioned earlier in the game, rivalries really heat up when teams start winning. And with the Nationals and Orioles both at the bottom of the respected divisions, this is more about a fan rivalry. And that's what Dave Tremblay said today. He said it's about, you know, families that half of them are Nats fans, half of them are Orioles fans. And what's going to be very special about these two matchups are when both teams start winning in the future, those families, those fans would have been in from the ground up. Bob? Well said, Amber Theo Harris. We enjoy having you with us when we combine things on these special 
Beltway weekends, and that's a quick out from Cesar Asturias out to Josh Willingham with Rich Hill, the pitcher, now coming up. So, DH debates raging all yeah. over Maryland and D.C. and Northern Virginia these days. Well, different type of baseball, and just the way it is. Well, when you came up, though, the pitchers, I think, were better athletes and could handle the bat, and, and maybe... Uh, I was having this debate on my radio show today. Now guys are just pitchers. They don't play other sports. They don't hit. They don't allow you to hit in the minor leagues. They DH for you. So it's almost like the, the, the pitcher's an afterthought when they get up in the National League. Yeah, and I asked Rich Hill who comes out of the National League yeah. because he was traded for Garrett Olsen from the Cubs. I said, can you hit? And he said, yeah, I'm not a bad hitter because he's a golfer. 123 <laughs> career average with five RBIs. Yeah. I mean, and then Jordan Zimmerman, he was a, what, two-way player at when he uh, came out of high school and college. I don't know if you're going to hit that kind of breaking ball, whether whether you can hit or yeah. not. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we've already seen some of the Oriole regular hitters wave at that breaking ball. You know, Rob, it's kind of interesting. I mean, this is about as good a breaking ball as you can throw. And yeah, it is to a pitcher, but it, you, what you want to do when you get ahead in the strike zone is command the breaking ball just under the strike zone, and he does that. But to me, if you're going to bring young pitchers up, and the Orioles are going to do it over the, the course of this summer, and the Nationals have already done it, can you throw strikes? Are you going to be intimidated of pitching to contact? And it doesn't seem to me that Zimmerman, Zimmerman is. Now explain that point. I talk about it all the time, that sometimes, you know, you've got to visualize guy on first rolling a ground ball double play and, and picking a pitch that that guy will hit. That's what a lot of our younger pitchers are having trouble with right now. Brian Roberts is a doubles machine, 51 of them last year, an all-time record for a switch hitter in Major League history, and that's number 12 for him this season. Well, you know, the one thing that Brian does, I mean, he can steal bases, he's a terrific defensive player, but he can adjust. So if you hang a breaking ball, and that's what this is, it's going to speed up the bat. You know, he gets the low curve ball, the thigh-high curve ball, it gets to it very, very quickly. And this year, as Adam Dunn's going to run it down, he's even been a little bit better. So much more aggressive, already six home runs. Adam Jones gets a two-out RBI chance with Roberts at second base. Jones rung up on that nasty up-and-away fastball first time. As mentioned, Bill Welke, the 10-year veteran behind the plate. The crew chief is Tim Welke. And there's a base hit to left. Roberts around third. Willingham with a strong throw that's late. The safe call was made, so he got the plate, and the Orioles lead 2 nothing. It's kind of hard to tell from the crow's nest up here, but uh, <laughs> it, it, you're right, Bobby. First thing the home plate umpire did was call him safe, so that means he did take the bat. Well, he got hurt with the breaking yep. ball to Roberts. He gets hurt with the breaking ball right there to Adam Jones. Adam Jones came into today with 50 hits. He's having a great season. And right there, he didn't try to do too much. He just beat it on the ground really hard. Well, there's your perfect example of you threw a fastball right by the guy the first time, and then you sped up his bat. Wasn't a great breaking ball. I always used to think, and I'm sure you probably agree, the numbers you put up, you don't like to give up runs. So no. with a man in scoring position, and even though you do have first base open, you're going to make your pitch. Yep. And especially, you're not just throwing him a get-me-over breaking ball, and that's what appeared that was. And he just threw a... Slider in there for a strike to Marquecas, who might have been looking first pitch heater. Nick Marquecas looks fastball every pitch. <laughs> <laughs> and he adjusts so that's to the his breaking approach, ball. right? Well, it is. And, and keeps and, his hands back for the yeah. breaking ball. And if you throw him the breaking ball, and he's hit a grand slam in Boston, hit a change up last night in New York, you speed up his bat. Now you can hit home runs on fastballs too. But he's very much like Ryan Zimmerman, where you pitch him away, he's going to hit the ball away. I mean, that's why they're both outstanding hitters. And Nick, for a young player, they talked about it when they signed A ball, double A. The discipline. He does not swing at too many balls until you get the two strikes. 2 1 pitch. Sound like a broken bat. And a flare to left. Here comes Willingham. And the Orioles will score again. Two out double Roberts. RBI single Jones 2-0 Jim Hunter straight ahead.
nothing lead, back-to-back -back innings, scoring a run. And thanks for joining us this weekend as we combine our crews. Jim Hunter with Jim Palmer and Rob Dibble. So you'll get a chance to talk baseball with a couple of pitchers. And what we've seen tonight is when you make a good pitch, you get them out, you leave it out over the plate, and they're going to hit it. Well, and I think it's tough for Jordan Zimmerman, too. This is his seventh Major League start. He's out there with great stuff, but really he doesn't have a game plan yet. And I think the more he goes around the league, the more he'll establish, establish that game plan. And Rich Hill trying to get himself immersed in the Orioles rotation. He has a little bit more experience. He knows what his out pitch is. The question is, can he consistently get to it in the count where he can throw it? Well, that's why one of our keys to the game was fastball command. So he's able to do that. You know, you're going to look at a guy that's going to be a very important part of this Oriole rotation. Now, he hurt his elbow, obviously, in spring training. Is that something that's in, in his mind when he throws a curveball? Is there still any pain in my elbow? Well, apparently not. He threw a lot of them against Kansas City. So Rich Hill going to work the lower part of this Nationals lineup with Justin Maxwell leading off. Pitcher spot, then back to the top. Maxwell recently called up from the minor leagues, and the Nationals are accelerating their rebuilding process with their youngsters. This one popped up right side, and that'll be back in the crowd. And when you think about a rebuilding process, guys, and you're trying to build a core, it does make sense that if the younger players, even though they're inexperienced, may be better options than the players you have here, why not go with the younger guys? Uh, that, that's a great one, Jim, because <laughs> some of the older players that they have called up, even in the bullpen, are afraid to throw strikes. And Jim's already been talking about, Jim Palmer, uh, about guys afraid to throw to contact. But, you know, you've been around 15, 17 years, like in Julian Tavares's uh, case, and some of these guys have come up here and won't throw it anywhere near the strike zone. So you might as well call some of these kids up and let them learn at the major league level if they're going to be a little bit better talent-wise than some of these other guys. Wow, look at the placement of that curveball. Caught the outside corner for a called strike three. One away on the first strikeout for Rich Hill. Well, we talked about our first uh, key to the game tonight, PNC, was Captain Hook. And he'll throw it in any count. I mean, that's one of those around that barely catches the outside corner. And I think uh, Justin gives up on it. He thought maybe it went around the plate. Home plate umpire Bill Walkie thought otherwise. Well, now he dips that back shoulder, like you said, and the front shoulder comes way up, but he doesn't really get over that front leg. Could that give him problems down the line? Well, it is, and I think that's why he cuts his fastball. You can see that fastball run in a little bit. And, you know, after he hurt his elbow, Rob, in spring training, and he had, you know, had some fluid on it, they really backed him off. Because, again, you know, we're talking about it, you know, a couple of years ago, he won 11 games, the back problems last year. Lou Pinella with the Cubs, my, one of my former teammates, a guy I played against. Not a very patient guy, as you know. No. You played for him. I played for yeah. him. And, and, you want guys, and, and and the problem is, too, with that, when, when you're injured a lot, and, and I looked over his profile, he's had a lot of injuries. And he's 29 years old, but he's only got about 60 starts at the major league level. Is that a little bit late right now uh, for a guy like Aaron? For, Not for uh, a left Chill, Excuse me. <laughs> Jordan Zimmerman, the pitcher up, he swings through it, and two men down, and this is something we're not accustomed to seeing day in and day out. The pitcher hit, although I heard you guys talking about the debate about the DH. The American League actually has a better record in interleague baseball than the National League. Well, you know, it, it's it's a little difficult, and even for Jordan Zimmerman right, right there, some of our everyday guys can't hit this curveball. And here's our famous Dave's Exmo camera. There's Rich Hill getting over the top of this curveball right here, Jim. Got to be difficult for a hitter to be waiting on that pitch. Well, it really is because it's almost like uh, Jabbar's sky hook. <laughs> you don't see too many balls, and he's tall. He's 6'5". So he's a big guy. And again, how many guys throw a big overhand slow curveball like that? But he's setting it up well yep. with the fastball, and that gets us back to what we talked about in the first inning, establishing the fastball and then going to your out pitch. I think maybe, Rob, though, he might look at it the other way. I'm going to establish my curveball and, and set up the fastball. The fastball. Yeah. Christian Guzman, the leadoff hitter, pop foul the first, his first at bat. And then throw in a little changeup. Guzman, a rare veteran on this team. Orioles have seen him for years when he was a young player with Minnesota and really making his name there before coming over to the Nats. Well, he's had a marvelous year so far, Jim. I mean, he's, he's been a great leadoff hitter. He's been a contact guy. He's only walked a couple of times, but there you see against lefties this year, he's just been pounding them. That's ridiculous. Was, was hitting nearly 500. So, uh, you know, for a switch hitter, I think it's it's very difficult. I've always wondered how they do it, but this guy's been doing it on both sides and makes the rest of the lineup great. Gets on a lot, table setter. 
I want to ask Jim Palmer this question. Your first time through the lineup when you were starting, and did you throw all your pitches, or did you save something for maybe the second and third trip through? Curveball oh, swung we'll out and missed. This. Christian yeah. Guzman <laughs> goes down, and Rich Hill strikes out the side. We play three in the Battle of the Beltways, and the Birds have a 2 nothing lead. Lesson is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Low fares, no hidden fees. By PNC Bank, PNC leading the way. And by Corona and Corona Light. Kick back and relax with an ice cold Corona and lime. And please relax responsibly. It is a gorgeous Friday night in our nation's capital. Screech and the Oriole Bird just had a duel. Who won? Well, the... Oriole Bird lost first, but then he snuck up behind Screech and knocked him down, and that's why Screech is leaving uh, somewhat dejectedly. Here's Aubrey Huff leading off for the Birds in the fourth. The Orioles have a 2 nothing lead. So our bird doesn't fight dirty? I like the <laughs> Oriole Bird. Not yet. <laughs> it's going to be a long weekend. <laughs> Huff more Reimold against Jordan Zimmerman. Here's a bouncer to second base, waiting on the big hop as Belliard, and one down in the Oriole fourth inning. And Belliard gets the chance. All right, what's our bird doing here? Ooh. Oh, look at Back that. Flip. Our, our bird can't do that. No. Wow. Oh. That was impressive. Wait, is he on some apparatus or something? I, he jumped off the tarp. He did have oh. a little bit oh, of okay. help with a spotter, so he didn't hurt himself. That's like Cody Ransom's 40-inch standing <laughs> leap. Did you, did you see that on YouTube? Yes, I have. That's crazy. That got him on the DL. <laughs> Melvin Moore bounced out his first at bat. And he takes a strike. There's that fastball right at him. Melvin, three out of 16 over the last four games. And this is one of the things when you go through Kansas City and then New York and play the Yankees, you go against tough pitchers. All of a sudden, you look at your scorecard and four of the eight guys are in slumps. Yeah, Mark Akis even went three games without a hit. Well, that's what good pitching does. And, you know, we've seen that from Jordan Zimmerman tonight. I'll tell you what, I want to come back with this guy's stuff. <laughs> Yours wasn't good enough. Well, no, it was, but I can't. I, I want to be young. I want to be 22. Let's, let's again. see. Hall of Fame, three Cy Youngs, three World Championships. What else? Eight twenty-one seasons. Yeah. How many 20. times did you throw three hundred innings in your career? Too many. That, yeah. These guys. <laughs> these guys can't even do that in two years. Well, Melvin Moore down on strikes as Zimmerman gets it in there, number four, and two men down. Well, don't forget the Orioles return to Camden Yards Monday. The Blue Jays will be in town to make Orioles baseball part of your family's Memorial Day celebration. It's the Birds and the Jays battling it out 135, a day game on the holiday. First 10,000 fans, 15 and over, receive the military-style O's camo cap. Tickets start as low as 9 bucks. Get your tickets now, 888-848-BIRD or online, Orioles.com. Yeah, Kansas City, what a staff that cranky kid. Oh, his his ERA went down. He gave up three runs last night. Reimold towards the middle, and he's going to have a base hit. So Reimold is two out of two, and he just keeps impressing and impressing. 
Well, I told Third him multi hit game Jim excuse me since yeah. coming up and he now has base hits in seven of the eight games in the big leagues. Yeah, now, there's been some infield uh, hits and right here is one of them but there's also been uh, home runs one off Rivera one here tonight. And again you know pretty good fastball in didn't hit it hard but just well placed. I like I told him, you better not be resting on your laurels. We got a new broadcasting team up here tonight. <laughs> <laughs> he had no idea what I was talking about. Oh, he's got a six game hitting streak going now. Pretty good way to break into the big leagues. Well he had a home run on a fastball the first time up. Now he's got a hit on a fastball the second time up. What do you think he should see the third time up. <laughs> well and he started him off with a breaking ball. You know it's funny but he laid off. He, 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 I, I've right. talked to a lot of hitters about this some some guys they'll say if I can't hit the breaking ball I'll subtract that like Gary Sheffield after he hit his 500 home run he said I'll just look for one or two pitches and that helps me. Moeller lines it to left Willingham is there he has it for the out in the inning end so a two out base hit and a man left middle of the fourth battle of beltways the birds over the Nats two nothing. President's race. Will this be the day? Will Teddy Roosevelt win for the first time ever? Go, Teddy, catch him. You got to catch George. You got to catch Thomas Jefferson. Oh, no, he Lincoln's there. And where's Teddy? He's out of the race. Teddy loses again. Oh, that's just so disappointing. I so <laughs> wanted to be here the night that Teddy Roosevelt won the race. They even came in here from Pittsburgh with pierogies, and the pierogies won. They wouldn't let <laughs> Teddy win. So. Now, if I remember right, last year, the middle game of the series, there was a match race between Teddy and, and the, the Oriole bird. bird, and Teddy won. Teddy won, but, but that wasn't against the other person. It didn't count. Yeah. Right. And but the, a year and, between wins? Come on. And the bird still is hurt by that. Really? Yeah, well, he expected to win. What about Screech in the Oriole? That, you know, think? that one I'd like to see. I'd love to see that. <laughs> Nick Johnson up, hard hit ball, base hit right field. Johnson one out of two. There was a lot of talk when the Orioles were in New York the last three days about the Mets and their first base situation with Carlos Delgado now out with hip surgery. And the two names that you most often hear, here's one of them, Nick Johnson on the famous Dave's Exmo camera. Well, there's that sweet swing from Nick Johnson on the famous Dave's Exmo. And yeah, I know where you're going and with there's this. There's the other one right yep. next to him, Aubrey Huff. Aubrey Huff. And I don't know, is Aubrey under contract or is he a free agent at the He'll end of the year? He'll be a free agent. Okay, year. so will Nick Johnson. I, I do know because I see Nick every day, his defense is tremendous. Uh, he can hit both ways. He's great in the number two hole. The thing about losing Delgado is Aubrey Huff has a ton of power. And that's something that they're missing. And if Jose Reyes and that calf is hurt, uh, I think Aubrey Huff would be a perfect guy to go over there. But then again, with the new ballpark, can you have a ton of power well, in, ball in City Field? I don't yeah. know. It, yeah, that's a nice pitcher's part. Yeah. It's a little bit different than Shea Stadium, but. Ryan Zimmerman up with a man on. There's a breaking ball for a strike, the big curve ball by Rich Hill. Zimmerman, it is hard to find a category in which he is not among the leaders in the National League. Tied for ninth in home runs, fifth in batting, eighth in RBIs, 18 multi hit games, which is tops in the National League. And he's four for six off Hill. 
like that. <laughs> it's another category he's good at. He's behind 0 2, slide step, and the fastball misses outside. We're getting a chance to see Zim every day, though. He hits the ball to the right side as well as he does to the left side. And that, to me, I played with Frank Thomas, I played with Barry Larkin, I played with a lot of guys that uh, they could hit it all over the field. And I think because he sprays it, I think he's going to just be a phenomenal player for years to come. We haven't even seen the best from him. Towards the gap in right center field, long run for Adam Jones, and that ball is out of here. It got over the scoreboard. That's a two-run home run, and we're tied. The first base umpire, Tim Welke, good job. He got out there and saw where the ball hit before it came back on. Well, he sprayed that one. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, break this down, Jim, on the Northrop Drummond pitch track. Well, there's your first pitch fastball. Third ball right there. 0 oh and 2. He misses outside and then trying to make a pitch inside. Gets it out over the plate. Ouch. I threw a lot of these. <laughs> <laughs> Good, high average, powerful hitters. Youth pitch to their power and make a mistake. They're going to hurt you. So, number 11 for number 11. He now has 34 RBIs, and just like that, this game is tied, and that is what has plagued, among several things, the Orioles pitchers as a whole this year. The Orioles have allowed the most home runs in the American League. That is number 64 allowed, and this is their 41st game. Out. And again, I think people, you know, last year, Washington did not have a good offense. I mean, they're no. third in the National League in runs. Yeah, last year they finished 14th in offense. Yeah. How strong is Adam Dunn? He checked his swing in the fly ball. Of well, don't you think if Paul, Bunyan, for the out. if Paul Bunyan was ever going to play baseball that he would be in a Nationals uniform? He just he would be out Adam Dunn. Left. Absolutely. Yep. And a, a wonderful guy. We went over to Walter Reed Hospital today with a bunch of the Orioles, and Adam was over there. Um, and he is such a wonderful kid. His parents, by the way, I don't even think they're six foot tall. Either one of them, the father or the mother, they're wonderful people. He's a monster. He's 6'6", 275, was supposed to play quarterback at Texas. Chose baseball, obviously, and he's been fantastic. But uh, And he also says he golfs right-handed, and he's a good golfer. So he has the patience to just hit it in the fairway. So he's not like a power guy out there on the course. Not a John Daly? <laughs> Josh Willingham takes ball one. Grip it and rip it. <laughs> No, I, he's not. He says his short game's his best game. It's not in baseball. He loves to hit the long ball, but that's another thing, though. Nick Johnson, Adam Dunn, even Zim, uh, you know, they're so patient. You talk about Markakis like that, but our guys are the exact same way. They make pitchers throw a lot of pitches by the fifth inning. We've gotten so many guys out of there with 100 pitches through five innings. Uh, it's mind-boggling. That They take a lot of pitches. There's Nick. Willingham walked his first at bat. Watches that one sail outside. Yeah, so now, yeah, now you get into one of those situations, Rob, where again you've already given up a home run on a fastball, and you got a good fastball hitter looking for it, and he misses. And that's why you can throw all the curveballs in you want. At the end of the day, to pitch into the sixth or seventh inning, you have to be able to command your fastball. Well, and that's why I brought that up with, uh, an inning or two ago about going through the lineup. Okay, he's already showed you he's got a great curveball. He's got the fastball around 88. The hitters know you, what you're featuring. You know, you really don't have any something to surprise them the second or third time through. Well, you're right, and, and that's why, you know, we used to have our pitchers meetings, as I, I, no doubt you did too, and of course, I know you, I mean, exceptionally hard thrower, and, you know, you'd come in and probably pitch more than one inning, but you weren't, you started early on in the minor leagues, but you'd come in, and, you know, Earl Weaver would say, as Rick Kranitz is going to come out, the Oriole pitching coach, and talk to Rich Hill. Basically, you know, Earl would say, well, you know, you can't throw this guy a fastball, and you can't do this, and you can't do that. And I'm sitting there going, well, what I do best is throw fastballs. I mean, the the, the, right. the, right. the World Series game in 1970, we had Guerra and McDalia won 23 and 24 games. And we went through the first seven Cincinnati hitters. They were all high fastball hitters. And finally, I raised my hand. I said, why am I starting the first game? They said, oh, not your high fastball. <laughs> <laughs> so... You know, that again, was a compliment. I, it was. Yes. <laughs> and Brooks hit two home runs and we won. So <laughs> things worked out all right. Runner goes, throw to first behind him, up to second base. The tag, he is out at second base. And that looked very close. It looked like Willingham did get the foot in, but Jim Reynolds calls him out. And that's a big out for Rich Hill, two men down. Well, obviously, Manny acted looking on. And 
Huff's going to make a very nice play because he's got to clear the runner. Watch him come get the ball. Come, well, he can't really see it right there, but it, he comes towards the pitcher and then the snap throw. There is this tourist. Does he get him? And we've had a lot of problems oh. with this play ourselves where our first baseman doesn't come in onto the grass and then throw it to yep. the inside part of the ba base. We've hit runners right in the back three or four times this year with throws uh, on pickoff play. So it kind of defeats the purpose yeah. of picking the guy yep. off. And it looked like he was safe. Tagged him up on the hip. So the area play goes the Orioles way. Two down, bases empty with Belliard up. And that one's over but low. Two of them on the count on Belliard. Well, I think it was Steve Bedrosian was in one of those pitchers meetings. And here's a look at the tag at second base right here by Achuris. Well, it looked like he got him on the thigh. And, and they were going through the lineup going, good fastball hitter, good fastball hitter, good fastball hitter. Steve Bedrosian goes, but can he hit a great fastball? <laughs> and so that's, and, and I agree with what Jim's saying. I mean, you got to pitch to your strengths, whether it's Jamie Moyer's fastball or, uh, you know, a Jim Palmer fastball, whoever it is, you have to pitch with what God gave you or what got you to the major leagues. If you start giving in and saying, well, I can't get this guy out. I can't get this guy out. You know, if you locate your pitches, I truly believe this. If you hit your spots you and you visualize guys hitting the ball on the ground, hitting it up in the air in certain situations, maybe taking something off a breaking ball here and there, uh, you can pitch at this level. But if you defeat yourself before you take the mound that I can't get you out with my stuff, you're not going to pitch up here. 3-2 curveball. He got him. So the inning ends, but not before Ryan Zimmerman comes up. And with a man on, hits his 11th home run of the year. He got it out to right center field, and we are tied at two in the Battle of the Beltways. Ballpark in the Battle of the Beltways in a 2 2 game following the Zimmerman home run. And Jim and I are excited for the Aflac trivia question of the night. Let's see if we can stump the Hall of Famer. Which pitcher has the most wins in interleague play? Oh, I know that. You do? Yes. He started his career with the Orioles, finished with the Yankees. Mike Mussina? Yep. I think that's it. I think Moose won like 21 games. I'll go with Jim. I think he was 21 and 13 to be exact. Well, how about him? He, I, he finally wins 20 games and then he retires. Well, you know, he came up to me early <laughs> last September and he said, you know, if I go two and one, you and I'll have identical records. And then he won like four and one and won 270 games. And as you mentioned, won 20 games for the first time in his career. Hey, when you consider the era that he pitched in, the gold gloves, Hall of Famer. Not a Jimmy, you know, not a Brady right. Johnson, not right. a Maddox. Well, he dominated yeah. during his era, right? Yeah. yeah. That, that's that? what you look yes. for. And he was actually better as an Oriole because he was younger and had better stuff. As Torres goes down, one away. I mean, he still did well with the Yankees, but his winning percentage is kind of funny. Better as an Oriole with teams that were not as good as they were in New York. But what a brilliant pitcher he was, especially in big games. His 97th postseason for the Orioles, as good as any pitcher you're going to see. 
Mike well, Messina. I'd love to get Jim's thoughts on that because I liked Ray Miller's approach that when you got in trouble 2-0 and or guys on base, he slowed things down. Where most guys, even the young guys today, they want to try to overpower you or throw something in the zone. I mean, Mike Messina, he was great and very effective at slowing things down. Yeah, and he made adjustments very well. And, of course, you know how he did it. I did his first game. He lost on a home run, one nothing. Frank Thomas, one of the guys he had trouble getting out, as Hill's going to go down as Jordan Zimmerman. Tell you what, he's a little second to life right here after the home run by his counterpart. So Six strikeouts for Hill. Let's see if Jim Palmer is right. There's the duck. We missed the duck on our matching. That may be wrong, but I, I, I thought it was Moose. Which pitcher? Let's see. Mike Messina. 21 at the, That would have been a great Cy Young season. I've, I've had Just too much time off. Games. Too much time off to be able to come up with that. Well, you know, the, the statistical service that Masson subscribes to for the broadcasters, and we very much appreciate it, it was 78 pages today just on interleague. <laughs> so, had you had the time, Jim, to peruse, you would have seen that it was Mike Messina. Well, I knew it. That's well, right. You didn't need to peruse. He didn't no, Rob, need, to, he need to study. Did we need to waste our time out. on that? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. I keep forgetting about your amazing memory. No, I did see that in one of the notes. And but plus, you know, I mean, I've been listening to Oral games, national games. Yeah, where have you been? You know, I haven't seen you in a month. Flipping channels. God, I've been gone a week. <laughs> <laughs> I know it seems like been? a month. I've been in Florida. I've been everywhere. Got to get around. All right, so you brought this up off the air, though. You tried to make a comeback at 45. How did your arm feel all the years you threw all those innings? How did you feel? Really arm actually felt body? better than the rest of my body. So it was the rest <laughs> of your body that held you back. Especially the hamstring. <laughs> yeah, again, if you're Jordan Zimmerman, you have to, you're 22. You don't have to worry about those things. True. Roberts fouls it off. Time for the Firestone leaders, presented by Firestone, a tradition of innovation. And in interleague games, we're looking at Ichiro Suzuki. This is most base hits. And B Rob, look at that. Third overall, 101 hits in interleague play. Looks at that one outside. Michael Young, one of the best players in the major leagues, doesn't get enough credit. Shortstop for the Texas Rangers. He's an amazing oh, he hitter with a great player. Well, you know, he had had five 200 hit years, won a batting title, and had to get hurt last year to keep that. There's another one. Brian Roberts, a two hit game, his hitting streak now at five. And it's amazing how good of a hitter Brian Roberts is because he was really struggling the early part of this road trip. And then once he broke the over, now he's hitting five straight. Well, there you see the great swing, head down, follow through. Doesn't try to do too much. So for Brian, that's his 15th multi-hit game, trying to make a run at Adam Jones, who was at the plate. Adam, even though he has missed a few games because of a couple of injuries, has 19 multi-hit games. I love this kid. You guys get to see him an awful lot. I mean, how special is he going to be? Well, as special as he is a player, and he's made some great adjustments last year. He chased high fastball, breaking balls like young hitters do. And he's even better as a person. I fly ball to center field back on it is Maxwell. He'll have a play and on the warning track. He hauls it in for the out. So Jones gave it a ride, but this big ballpark held it two out in the man left middle of the fifth and a 2 2 game.
Hey, on television, how about give us a wave? Uh, yeah, okay, I'll kind of give you a wave. And Orioles fans, when it comes to tickets, you deserve Major League Service. Go to StubHub, the official fan-to-fan -fan ticket marketplace of Orioles.com. And there's a look at the Orioles' upcoming schedule over the next five games. The Battle of the Beltways continues tomorrow night. And then again on Sunday, and then it's back home. A Memorial Day day game against the Blue Jays. The surprising Blue Jays maybe coming back a little bit. Now they're beginning to play some games within the AL East. Rich Hill deals to Josh Bard, lower third of the lineup. Are you guys going to miss Halliday or do you get Roy Halliday? Haven't looked that far ahead. That's yet. like a big question. Uh, you know, do you get Santana it's or do exactly. you miss him? <laughs> <laughs> well, Santana's thrown against Dice Gay Matsuzaka yeah. up in Boston tonight, so, but well, uh, Halliday's my favorite pitcher right now in the big league. Oh, he's awfully good. I saw Mike Maddox, who's uh, now the pitching coach in Texas, has done a nice job. He said, boy, you know, I got to see Roy Halliday the other day in person. <laughs> I mean, he's that good. He's that good and doesn't get any of the publicity he deserves. Well, you know, it's an interesting thing. Uh, you know, he wins the Cy Young Award. Had to go back to the minor leagues, revamp his windup. And you know who he, sent him down there, Buck Martinez. Yep. And uh, would he work with Mel Queen? Yep. Two one is swung on and miss. And pretty good change up right there by Hill. But he, when he went back, he, he wins the Cy Young Award. And he struggled in the next year, and it's raining in Baltimore. Take a look at this two one change up hitters count, and he just pulls the string and slow it down. He said, "You know what? I got away from what I did last year, which is one batter at a time, one inning at a time." And it's a point you make on all your broadcasts yep. as a former pitcher. Whether you're Rich Hill at 29 or you're Jordan Zimmerman who will turn 23 yep. tomorrow. The bottom line is you can't project well three runs seven innings. You got to get them one two three in the first and then progress through the ball game. Called strike three on the inside corner. Barr didn't like the call. Bill Welke, Tim's younger brother, interesting umpiring crew with brothers on the crew, and Tim will have the plate tomorrow. But this is Bill Welke calling out Josh Barr. Well, our pitch track never lies. Yep, it went right through the box. <laughs> That's a good pitcher's pitch right there, a little bit close. Now, do you believe, Jim, in it going across the plate as a strike or where it's caught? Well, I, I think that Bill Welke called that where it crossed the plate in, and that's what I in think. relation to yep. the hitter, not where he caught it, which is the way you're supposed to call it. Off-speed pitch Maxwell can't reach. You know, you're talking about pitching, and if fans joined us late, the Orioles did make a roster move today. Adam Eaton was released by the Orioles today. Eaton in his last two starts in 14 innings, or excuse me, allowed 14 runs in just nine and two-thirds innings. And he allowed four or more runs in seven of his eight starts. So he was released, and Dave Tremblay told the media before the game today that the starter who will move into Adam Eaton's spot, which comes up Tuesday, is not currently on this team. <laughs> so that means, let's see, who's pitching well at AAA? Who's on the roster? A lot of guys. Well, David Hernandez, who is on the roster now, had an outstanding year at Bowie last year. He's pitching at AAA. In three innings tonight for the Tides, no hits allowed on seven strikeouts. And what they're looking for here is, can you command your fastball? Can you throw strikes? And are you the guy that's going to get their attention to earn that call -up? Yeah, and I think that's the important thing. I mean, obviously, the, the Nationals, what, with four young pitchers? Four rookies. Yeah, four rookies. And they have to make the decision, not only to bring them up here, but you have to trust on your scouting and development guys to say, hey, I want a guy, Zimmerman's one of these guys, that'll throw it over the plate. Yes, yep. he'll get knocked around. He's not going to all of a sudden start pitching around everybody or whatever. And we have seen in Baltimore in the last couple of years, guys have come up that are not capable of pitching at this level. Hopefully that'll change. Well, you had one guy there that we have now, and he's out in our bullpen, Daniel Cabrera, that can't spot his curveball, can't throw a lot of strikes with his fastball. And we had a kid last night, Craig Stamen, who just came up from the minor leagues, another youngster, and all he did was throw strikes. Wasn't overpowering, has an 88-mile-an-hour fastball, has four pitches he could throw for strikes. But Stamen, all he did last night was keep them off balance and throw strikes. So well, retired 19 in the first 20. Yeah, hey, he Brad, was amazing. Brad Bergeson is doing that for the Orioles. He had a rough first inning in New York the other night, and then he went out and he was mowing them down, three up, three down. He, he had a tough seventh inning when he walked two guys. But if you throw strikes and you move your ball around, you're going to have a chance to succeed. The one thing about that game, he had Sabathia. The Orioles were hitting rockets all over the field, but right at fielders. What's the moral of the story? Let him put it in play. Somebody might catch it. 2-2 game through five.
Orioles get set to bat in the sixth. And don't forget Monday, Orioles reach AT&T and cell phones for soldiers invite you to bring your no longer used cell phone to Oriole Park. The phones donated at the game on Memorial Day against the Blue Jays will be recycled to purchase prepaid phone cards for our troops overseas. So bring your phones on Monday to Oriole Park and help support our troops. That is a very good gesture and a good idea. I think I have about three of those at home in the office file cabinet that I'll dig out and donate. Here's our box score as the Orioles bat in the six. Marquez up and Mora as Jordan Zimmerman, who somehow eluded all the major college programs and pitched in Division Three at that baseball factory, University of Wisconsin at Stevens Point. <laughs> well, yeah, he was an all. I mean, the Woody, what you come with green, uh, that ball's lying right to the left fielder. For an out, I mean, it, one game in high school, what, he was a wide out? 11, 11 uh, passes caught for 300 and some yards. And then he was a terrific hitter. Well, he's had a no decision in his last three starts, one in his major league debut. Mm -hmm. And on this beautiful night in Washington, D.C., he is pitching a fine game. Thanks for joining us on the Battle of the Beltways. We have combined our Masson family, as we will over the next three days. Huff wide at third. Zimmerman's there, two men down. Jim Hunter, Jim Palmer, Rob Dibble, Bob Carpenter, Debbie Taylor, Amber Theo Harris. I saw Johnny Holiday and Ray Knight on television, so they're in the ballpark. <laughs> yeah, Jackson. they're right out there. Their set's out there. Yep, that's where they'll be later. Behind the uh, Orioles bullpen. Rick Dempsey and Tom Davis in the studio. And when we renew this rivalry next month, they'll be at the ballpark. Beautiful. We always enjoy combining the Masson families. So in lieu of Rick Dempsey being here, we sent his cousin Greg Zahn. <laughs> I don't know where Zahn is. Well, I live in the same town as, as Rick Dempsey out west. In oh, California. Really? Yes. So I never knew that until I met him at a mass and function before the uh, the season started. But you now that we're neighbors, I'm going to go over to his house. He's at a nicer area than I am. <laughs> you don't get out much or <laughs> no. when I get out, I'm riding Harley somewhere. So I don't think Rick and I are going the same circles. <laughs> I could just imagine Demper in leather. <laughs> <laughs> Melvin Mora is 0 for 2. Two outs, none on. Uh, Zimmerman really is impressive. 15 and 5 in his very brief minor league career. And here's what Rob and Jim were talking about. Second and third time through the lineup, it gets tougher to hit him. And Mora works a walk, gets two men down. See, and that's not wild, wild. I mean, all those balls were over the plate. We, we saw that last night with Stamen when he got in trouble in the seventh. Uh, he, the one walk to Nate McLeod was just a little under the strike zone. And but if you're going to miss right there, 94 low. That, that's a good yeah. place to miss. And, you know, th this one thing I've talked to a lot of the younger pitchers, and I know you talk to a lot of younger pitchers, if you're going to miss, miss low. Don't don't miss fastball up high because especially up here, uh, you know, as Leo Mazzoni said about the, the jet planes coming through home plate, you miss high 95, 98, it's going to leave the ballpark. So Rymel the chance to hit with a man on, and breaking ball goes outside. Rymel two out of two. Yeah, that's the one pitch I don't know. I mean, that's in between a slurve and a slider. Yeah, that's not one of his better pitches. He has, he has a really good over-the-top slider or curve, whatever you want to call it, and then the good changeup, and then that fastball. <laughs> and you can see he missed his target by, what, two and a half feet? But again, if you have great life, I mean, forget the velocity. If you're a hitter, you want to know what the ball does when it gets into the hitting zone. Is it straight? Does it move a little bit? Does it take off? Does it run? The ball did one of everything. There's, there's a good there's break. A good one. Yeah. And a very good eye by Reimold. He looked it over and let it go by for ball two. And Not, I know you yeah. had kind of a, a slower delivery. He's got a Roy Oswalt kind of delivery. He's got a real quick, you know, get up and down kind of deal, but he can just blow it in there 94 95. Hard at ball towards short. Guzman backhands, turns, fires to second. And the force on Moore retires the Orioles in the six. We'll head to the bottom of the six in a 2-2 game.
buddy. The, uh, it's a tight game right now in the bottom of the sixth. And Nolan Rimel got the scoring going with a home run earlier in the game. Many feel he's earned the right to stay with the big club. Even when Luke Scott comes off the DL on Tuesday, I asked Nolan what he thinks of his play. I've been playing uh, solid, nothing spectacular or anything like that, but uh, I think I've been holding my own, and uh, I think with uh, more time up here, I'll keep getting better and better. He should earn the right to stay up here. The interesting thing is he was a natural right fielder. He only started playing left field when he went to Arizona Fall League this last fall. The Orioles made the move, obviously, because right field was locked up for about six to ten years or so. Jim. All right, Amber, thank you very much. That's a very good point. If you're a top outfield prospect and you're an Oriole, now all of a sudden it's getting crowded in left field as well. You got, oh, there, that guy, Nick Marcakis in right. Yeah, forget well, he's about not going Adam, anywhere. Forget about Adam yeah. Jones yeah. moving anywhere in center field. So you better hope that you could play left field. As or you can DH. Back. You could do a little bit of a little bit of everything. And he is a good athlete. I know Buck Martinez was talking about that. You know, he worked hard on his defense, throws pretty well. I said, did you play football? You're a big guy. Uh -uh. He was a point guard and a small forward. What? In high school. That was a big high school. Yeah. Well, when he was drafted. Not a, not a, not a point guard. Excuse me, a, a, a number two guard. Okay. When he was drafted by the Orioles in 2005, that was the same draft, by the way, that the Nationals got Ryan Zimmerman, although Zimmerman went in the first round. Foul tipped at the plate. The Orioles immediately put him in center field because he was such a good athlete. But as Amber just pointed out, when you run the minor leagues, you have to think, well, let's see, where do we need help on the big league club and who might be that guy? And all of a sudden, Reimold became a left fielder. And with Lou Montagna still bothered by that sore thumb, you don't know what might happen when Luke Scott is ready. Let's bounce toward short as Torres charges to play the hop and gets it across in time and one down. Well, don't forget, fans, you can vote for Adam Jones, Nick Markakis, and the rest of your favorite Orioles for the 2000 Major League Baseball All-Star Game. Just get online now, Orioles.com. Don't miss your chance to vote orange and save green by voting for your birds the maximum 25 times. You'll receive a free upper reserve seat to any non-primos game after the All-Star break. So vote early, vote often, and for all the details, just get online, Orioles.com slash vote orange. Well, one away in the sixth inning is Rich Hill and Jordan Zimmerman involved in a real good duel here. I never understood that though. If you can play left field, why can't you play right field? I mean, I, I grew up as a center fielder, shortstop, pitcher, but you should be able to play every outfield position, shouldn't you? Yeah, you would think so. I mean, obviously the ball comes off the bat. I, right. I think one of your former teammates, Chris Sable, yep. he played uh, right field in, in Baltimore, having never played the outfield. I said, how are you going to play right field? He says, I'm going to turn around and play it off the wall. <laughs> <laughs> and that's Sable. Sable. Sable was an amazing athlete, hockey player, golfer, whatever. And uh, one of the best third basemen I've ever seen. No fear. He looked to me that he would be the perfect third baseman because oh of what goodness. a reflex position. Yep. Can't be afraid of the ball. 3-0-2. Nick Johnson is taking high ball four and a four-pitch walk. Not a good idea when this guy's coming to the plate. Our Ford drive of the game. This was in the fourth inning. Yeah, after Johnson, who came in hitting 372 off of left-handed pitching, he gets the base hit into right field, and then Zimmerman with his 11th home runs, uh, RBIs 33 and 34, ties it up. And that's surprising, too, because it was a 3-2 fastball, and that's a guy whose best pitch is his curveball. I would think that, you know what, just gut it up a little bit, throw a 3-2 <laughs> breaking ball to this guy because he's got tremendous power. He's already got 11 home runs. Looked like a changeup missing low. Ryan Zimmerman now has been on base in 40 consecutive games with his home run. Without a doubt, the face of this franchise. Well, what he signed a five year extension is uh, Matt Albers, who was called up when Adam Eaton was released. Matt coming up, and Rick Granis is. Because one of the things we talked about the elbow problems this year, the back problems last year, the one thing they're very aware of is that he can get a little bit stuck. And Rick Kranitz was talking about there are pitchers, Cabrera when he was in an Oriole uniform, where you get into the middle of the game and maybe the windup goes a little bit awry right. and you don't know how to straighten it out. So, you know, with Sidney Pants, Ponson, you talked about Ray Miller, Ray would come out and put his hand on you. Right. Kind of like a horse where you yeah. settle him down. Right here, I think. 
you know, this is you know, maybe a little bit of high maintenance guy, but I mean, he's a terrific kid. Don't get me wrong. I think they're aware of that and they're just trying to make sure that he gets back on track. So six in a row out of the strike zone gets a visit from Rick Kranitz. Slow curve. There's a strike. So you're behind. You need a strike for your best pitch. Yep. You could probably talk about this too because I think pitchers have a lot of doubt. They always doubt their stuff. Is my fastball. Even when I was throwing 98, I didn't think I threw hard. I mean, you, you have it in your mind as a pitcher um, that my stuff's not that good, and so you you beat yourself up mentally out there. As Torres to Roberts hit too slowly to turn two, but the lead runner is forced at second base. Well, when when you struck out uh, what 141 in 99 innings ah, you did in 1989, <laughs> were you not trusting your stuff that year either? You know what? I was throwing almost all sliders, and my roommate Norm Charlton. Both of us threw 95, and this and he had three degrees from Rice University and we were roommates for seven years. We would we would bust each other about he threw all fork balls to get outs. I threw all sliders to get strikeouts. And it was like I, I rarely tried to rear back and throw it by somebody. It was almost like I set up my slider with a hard fastball, but I still out there doubted my stuff and, and would talk myself out of I was a two pitch pitcher, but I would constantly be going, but geez, you know, last time I struck this guy out on a slider. What should I start him off? And, and you're having this battle out there on the mountain instead of battling the hitter. And the third member of your trio, Randy Myers, also oh my got goodness, a lot yeah. on the slider. A lot on the slider, and boy, did he pepper the outside yep. part of the plate. <laughs> he had an amazing. Well, the last year, the yeah, the last year the, the Orioles had a winning season. He, he had, was what, 40, 46 yep. saves. Well, he was, he was amazing. You know how close he came to being perfect? The only save he blew all year. He had two outs and nobody on in the ninth, and he was one and two on the hitter. The Orioles were playing Oakland. Scott Spezio yeah. batting right handed. He poked the double down the line. Then Giambi came up. One and two on him. He hung a slider. Two run home run. The Orioles lost. That's the only. I, I do miss talking to Randy Myers because, you know, he, he used to talk like this. It's 10 minutes to stretch. Get the media out of here. <laughs> he was like a wrestler. Yep. Oh, my goodness. Clubhouse cop. Woo. And he'd have his camouflage jacket on with grenades up on the shelf in his locker. You remember when the president came to visit, they told him to clean out his locker. Yeah. They didn't want any trouble, <laughs> even though they were toys. But he could pitch. Yes, he could. And the guy at the plate's trying to put the Nationals ahead. Adam Dunn with the count in his favor. Three and one, breaking ball for a strike. And three and two, the Orioles have the shift on against Adam Dunn. Boy, he got a big hit last night. Yes, he did. Zimmerman tied it ball. up, and then... He but singled. Nick, he had four Nick, of the best at bats. Johnson, yeah. though, got the first yeah. hit off yeah. Gorzolani. Then he got another one off of Gorzolani. Really tough lefty. Zimmerman goes on the 3-2. It's pulled foul. Well, that was a hanger. Well, he dropped his arm angle, and uh, he did that on a number of occasions in Kansas City. Rich Hill's first start of the year. Right there, again, it's just deception. And, again, you don't make a very good pitch with it. And sometimes you get lucky. Well, here's the famous Dave's Exmo swing right there. Oh. I guess he just got out in front of that a little bit. <laughs> Look out. Another 3 2 coming to Adam Dunn. And that one breaks outside ball four. So there's the patience Rob was talking about. 37th time he's drawn a walk. Two walks in the inning, four in the game for Hill. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Washington Nationals and the Baltimore Orioles. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form, and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Washington Nationals and the Baltimore Orioles. That's going to do it for Rich Hill. Dave Tremblay out. 2-2 game in the sixth.
rapid rewind. Jordan Zimmerman making the start for the Nats tonight. This is seventh in the big leagues looking for his third win. Rich Hill goes five and two thirds. He has allowed two runs on only three hits. He cannot win this game and if either of the runners score on base and the Nats get the lead he could lose. Home runs in the game. Zimmerman's two run shot tied it. After earlier Nolan Reimold's solo home run gave the Orioles a lead. AT&T the nation's fastest 3G network. AT&T your world deliver. Hi guys. How you doing? And here is Matt Albers just back up from AAA. Well there are the numbers at the major league level and they were not good. Uh, late June last year the labrum problem so he rehabbed his shoulder the rest of the year did not have surgery came up this year actually velocity was better but command was not and went down to Norfolk and actually pitched pretty well eight innings a couple of runs and this is about matchups I would assume Rob wouldn't you think well you say he's a sinker baller this is a good fastball hitter right here so he better keep it down yeah, and there's a strike. Dave Tremblay told the media before the game that the reports from AAA on Albers was that he has his velocity back and he was pitching very, very well. There were good reports coming up from AAA. Yeah, he's got a pretty good breaking ball, kind of a uh, not a slider, but it's a hard curve ball that almost acts like one. Now back with the yeah. Astros before he came over to the Orioles, wasn't he primarily a starter? Yeah, and he did not have good numbers. He came over in the Miguel Tejada trade. In fact, Kip Wells, I guess, is from the Houston area, and they, they work out together. But last year, he did a terrific job because he could throw the sinker. This year, velocity up at least early on, but the, the balls were up in the zone, and that's not his strength. He inherits two runners here in this tie game. And this is inside. Hill five and two thirds, two runs on only three hits. Six strikeouts, but four walks. Yeah, he looks like he flies open a little bit yep. early, and then the ball, he leaves yeah. the arm behind, he drags that arm, and that's why it's going that way. And it seems like it runs more, but it stays on the same plane. Right. Two and one on Willingham. Hmm. There's a good pitch yeah. on the outside corner. Could get a whole two. lot better than that. Willingham thought he watched it go into the glove as a ball. He stepped towards the plate, except it hit the corner. Yeah, the one thing you talked about the fact that and Bob Carpenter talking about his power. He do hit what five home runs in his last 10 games, but two for 25 with runners in scoring position. Well, he's been playing sparingly because we have too yeah. many outfielders and he's not getting quality at bats and repetition. Two two is fouled off. But when he did get repetition, he got a fire. He was cranking some balls out of the out of the park. I mean, he is a good player. He reminds me of a younger version of Jeff Kona. Great point. You know, I Great mean, maybe point. just built like a freaking yeah. brick yep. and, <laughs> and just a great kid, too. I, I love Josh. He's just a very nice. And kid. you got to interview not only him, but his son last night after yeah, the game, after the game, after the game. Two and two on Willingham. Breaking ball in the dirt. He lays off and see there's one of those pitches where it might be the right pitch to call, but it's so far out of the strike zone and no way you're going to entice the hitter to go after it. Well, and I, I think the, the reason I love Rick Eckstein, our hitting uh, coach, is because he gets all of these guys. He knows they're all different, different egos, all that stuff, but he gets them to have the same type of approach when they go up to the plate and try to give their best at bat, that particular at bat. And I've seen nothing but great approaches at the plate this year from the hitters. Runners will go on the pitch, full count with two men down. And Albers got him. A swinging strike three to end the inning, so the two walks are left stranded. Good game here in the Battle of the Beltways through six. Albers strikes out Willingham, remains tied at two.
to a piece as we move to the seventh inning. Now, it is another military appreciation night here at Nats Park, and a wonderful thing happened earlier today. Members of both the Nationals and the Orioles visited Walter Reed Hospital. Manny Acta, Dave Tremblay, players, front office members, and I'm joined by Sergeant First Class Josh Ferguson, who was there this afternoon. What did it mean for them to all visit you and spend some quality time there? Awesome. It's, uh, you know, just kind of get your mind off a lot of it. And in, uh, in so many ways, I was, I was talking to a few of the guys. It's uh, some similarities. You know, no matter how old we get, uh, we still act like a bunch of overgrown kids. And, uh, man, just, just what it'd be to, to play a game for a living and you know, joke around. So it's, uh, it's easy to talk to the guys. It's very relaxing. The Washington Nationals donate these President's Club seats, the best seats in the house, to members of the military on a regular basis. And is it a nice escape to come out to a ball game, Josh? It's, it's amazing. Um, you kind of realize some things, but just coming out to a ball game, it's uh, you get a chance to bring the kids out. And uh, it's it's such a family-friendly, you know, environment. This this park's beautiful, and uh, I will say the President's Club's probably donated a bit to my gut. But, uh, yeah. Good food down here. Oh yeah, it's amazing. Josh, thank you so much, gentlemen. Back up to you. All right, Debbie, thank you very much. And Rob, since you were there today, can you tell us as Chad Bowler bloops it towards left, Guzman out, it's off his glove. There's a doink, Jim Palmer, and Moeller's on in this tie game with a leadoff single. That's his favorite word, Rob. Doink? A doink. He doinked it in I there, like but that. the one thing, and I'm glad Debbie found that, that gentleman, that we all need to remember, and let's hope on Monday everybody does, all that the veterans did for us to be able to sit around here in freedom and talk about baseball. Can't agree with you more. Um, I've gone over to Iraq to visit the troops. Um, you know, I, I, I can't tell them this about enough. You need to support them. It's not about the war or anything else. It's the troops. Absolutely. They just appreciate what they do. It's like the police, the firemen, people that run into buildings when you're running out and uh, allow us to do what we do. And they just, they, they don't want your sympathy. And, and going over there today and a lot of those kids that are as old as my 19-year-old daughter and they've lost their legs or their arm or whatever, um, you know, they, they haven't lost their spirit and they raise our morale. And so I think it was great for a lot of the, the Nationals and a lot of the young players with the Orioles to see that and to, and to appreciate, you know what, your worst day on the baseball field would be their best day in this, in this world. So you need to appreciate what you have. Now my, my father passed away six years ago. He was in the Navy during the Korean War. He was on an aircraft carrier. And we talk all the time about clubhouse chemistry, camaraderie, things like that. My dad told me that those four years in that ship, Looking back on it years yep. later, the best time of his life because that was his family. He was out on that ship. He fortunately never had to go into battle, but for the four years he was on call just in case. There's a double play ball as Tourist to the second baseman, Bellwell, back to first, and that erases that leadoff single and two men are down. Well, your dad was in the Navy. My brother was on a submarine, and he was in the Navy, and my other brother, uh, Lee, up in Connecticut, has been a fireman for over 20 years. So, and after 9-11, stayed on, was going to take his, his 20 years, but stayed on past that because of 9-11. So, uh, they're wonderful people, and especially over at Walter Reed. It was it was definitely a blessing to go over there with everybody today. Now, this is interesting. The Oriole fans are watching National League Baseball here. Felix P.A. was on deck to pinch it for Albers, but now with the bases empty, Dave Tremblay will allow Albers to bat so he can stay in the game. He faced only one batter to get out of the sixth inning. What I think they ought to do if the central league continues and it looks like it will they ought to switch the rules and go dh yeah. the whole well, thing no no, I, no no when oh when, you go pitching the whole thing. national league ballpark play the american league rules oh, american okay. league ballpark national league rules then the home fans get to see the other game that's actually a very good idea yeah actually it just would give people in the national league to see the american league game not only the players and the different teams well, it does make a little bit of sense, so that means they won't do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, my thing no is, chance. you know, I, it, it shouldn't affect, affect the playoff race. When Chen Ming Wong got hurt running the bases last year, it affected the Yankees. So uh, as long as the pitchers don't get hurt and they get you ready for it, let these guys hit the minor leagues, they'll have a shot. Well, Albers has a quick at bat. The leadoff single, none left. Seventh inning stretch brought to you by Jack Daniels Tennessee Whiskey. Please drink responsibly. A good one here. The Battle of the Beltways in a 2 2 game.
but we are tied at two. Ryan Zimmerman's two-run home run in the fourth tied this game. And now time for the Cabot Wood Stains legendary performance. Brought to you by Cabot Wood Stains. You'll find heritage, pride, and commitment in every can. Our performance is legendary. And speaking of legends, Felipe Alou, named manager of the Expos, May 22nd, 1992, became the first Dominican-born Major League Baseball manager. And, of course, not the last. The Expos turn nationals. Well, and Manny Acta is is uh, of Hispanic descent, but I think he's still the youngest manager in the major leagues right now. What, 40, right? Yeah. Well, I just think how much better he'll look when the pitching oh, straightens out. I think AJ Hinch is only oh, like yeah. 34, well, 36. So, and he got a three-year deal out in Arizona. Ooh, yeah. I had interviewed the owner Ken Kendrick, and he said that's just the way he does business. He did that with uh, Josh Burns, his general manager, and now he's done it with A.J. Hinch. He did it with Bob Melvin. But he let him go. Yep. I tell you, Bob Melvin played in Baltimore. With a special guy. 0-2 on Belliard leading off the National 7th. So Albert stays on. Slider it slowly to short as Stewart has to charge. And gets him by a couple of strides. Nicely done, one away. Well, Rob, wait till you come over to Camden Yards. Uh, you would have to come in, go through heavy grass to get that ground ball. It's a very <laughs> slow infield. And here, it's a little firmer. Now, do you believe the way I do that sometimes you set up your infield yeah. grass to, to suit your pitchers? And your your fielders and to help your team. Well, I think they if you, have, that, if yeah. you have some guys that uh, are good bunters, you know, per se back in the day, you know, like like Dodger Stadium had huh. long grass. They yeah, had a well, lot of bunters. They always laid Sparky down. Anderson had Alan Trammell and Lou Whitaker and they never mowed the lawn. Fly ball to center field. Easy play for Jones. Back pedals two men down. Well, you're right. I, I remember when I first came up Chicago, they had Joel Horland. Uh, Tommy John, and as we look at the bullpen right there, Ron Ballone getting up. And they had Gary Peters, all sinker ballers. What did they do? We put AstroTurf on. It was the silliest thing you've ever done. Yep. Bill Vec was. Scoot right through the infield. Yeah. It didn't make a whole lot of sense, but it. it I don't know. It, it just seems like when we go around the league, the Baltimore infield, when you want to compare it to here, Boston, New York, Texas, Tampa Bay, obviously, indoor stadium, it, it is very slow. Justin Maxwell, two outs, none on. First ball swinging foul. Third base coach Pat Listash. We'll give a fan a souvenir. Maxwell now with a big club. Another of the prospects the Nats are getting a look at. Yeah, Elijah Dukes hurt his hamstring, and that opened the door up for Justin to come back up to the major leagues. Great young man. Manny Acta says he's probably the best center fielder that we have in the organization. <laughs> That one fouled into the Orioles dugout. Yeah, Mike Rizzo, their general manager, was saying that, you know, he's a terrific all-around player, but at this level, he's just going to have to shorten his swing a little bit. But we heard that about Adam Jones, and he shortened it. And again, how do you do that? Repetition. Well, repetition, but yep. I also think when you get behind in the count with two strikes, you cut down a little yeah. bit on your swing and try to just put the ball in play. A lot of guys today do not want to do that. Thus, the high strikeouts. 0-2 oh, with the bases empty. Check swing right back to Albers. He will turn and get it to first. Gentlemen, it has been a pleasure. We'll look forward to more banter tomorrow night. Bob Carpenter returns. Ladies and gentlemen, don't go anywhere. Bob is coming back as Ron Velo comes in in this 2-2 game.
Jordan Zimmerman hanging around for quite a while in this game. You know right-handed power oh. pitching. What do you think of this guy? We want him. <laughs> Can't have him. Send him over to the other dugout. He was outstanding. Only the mistake to Rymel. Hill, of course, only the mistake to, uh, to Zimmerman. Of course, everybody's making mistakes to Ryan Zimmerman. And he's gone opposite field a lot for his extra base hits this year. That's been the thing. I mean, the Keys hit a lot of opposite field home runs. He's hitting a lot of doubles the other way during that 30-game hit streak. I mean, he was going all over the field. So he was tough to pitch to. And only until the Pittsburgh series did we see uh, a team that, that played him to the gap over in left center field and we're playing it perfectly. He was hitting these atom balls right at the left fielder. So uh, not a lot of teams have been able to get Ryan Zimmerman out. All right, so it's on to the top of the eighth inning. 2-2 ball game. And the Nats are into their bullpen here. Which is kind of scary. Ron Valone comes in, has been one of the uh, best relievers lately for the Washington Nationals. And we're into the Baltimore Orioles bullpen. Although they have kind of an advantage. Their ERA is about a run and a half less than ours. Ours is around seven. The uh, Baltimore Orioles bullpen is about 5.5. Top of the order for the O's, Brian Roberts. He's hit the ball on the button three times tonight. A line drive to right, doubled down the right field line, and a base hit out to left center. A little tapper, hurrying is barred. Plenty of time, and he throws a strike to Nick Johnson. Battle of the Beltways packed with great baseball, great fun, and giveaways courtesy of Exxon Mobil. Tomorrow, the first 20,000 fans receive a free Nats blue cap. And on Sunday, the first 10,000 kids 12 and under, a free Zimmerman kids jersey. Who else? That's Zimmerman with one N, by the way. 888-632-NATS, nationals.com. Are doing what a lot of folks did tonight. We call it walk-up. Walk up to the ballpark, buy a ticket, and come on in and see some good baseball. Adam Jones is next, one for three with an RBI single. So, Bob, what were you doing the last couple innings? Yeah, where have you been? Uh, actually, uh, sitting next to Mrs. Hunter over there. Okay. Bonnie Hunter? Bonnie, yeah. The Bonnie I got all kind of stuff on Jim now. The other Jim. The other Jim. <laughs> I got nothing on you. J.H. or J.P.? <laughs> J.H. I do finally remember, though, a Sunday afternoon back in 1990, I spent with you and Joe Morgan in Cooperstown. I had the honor of hosting a show when you and Joe were inducted, and that's one of the best days of my broadcast career. It rained. It did rain. Well, Jimmy Johnson up for the Orioles. Big, tall right-hander at 6'5". Rob, how, how tall are you? 6'3"? Six, 6'3 three? Six, three and a half. It seems like, I don't know if I'm shrinking, but all these kids, even today <laughs> over at uh, Walter, they're, they're just monsters. They're huge. Two balls and a strike. To Adam Jones, who slaps it into left field. He's two for four tonight. He's hit safely in 20 of his last 23 games at close to a 385 clip. Well, you talked about Ryan Zimmerman using the whole field, and I've seen Adams this year, and, you know, he's already hit as many home runs as he hit all last year. The well, last year, what, about 480 at bats, and he's in right around 140 at bats. But drive the ball the other way as good as any right hand hitter I ever faced. So again, you know, he's going to turn 24 this summer. Marcakis, as you mentioned, is 25. Ryan Zimmerman of the Nationals is 24. And this is really what the game's all about, trying to get people of this talent to the big leagues and let them be part of your community. Marcakis, 0 for 3 tonight. He's lined out to center, fly to left, lined to left. And Ron Valone catches the very front corner of the play with a good breaking ball. And the count's even 1-1. One -one. What was it like when you were pitching, though? I mean, you, even when you had the year where all four of you guys won 20 games, you had four-man rotations, and you completed almost all of your starts. How come none of you guys wore, wore out over the course of a year? Well, I, I'll get to that in a second. Might have broken his bat on that flare out to Dunn, two outs. Yeah, what they've been able to do against Mark Jacobs is just stay out of the middle of the plate. You know, he said, I don't know why everybody doesn't pitch me up and in, and that's what Valone did. Well, I, I tell him that they can't, they don't all pitch you up and in because they can't. And again, right here, I mean, look at this pitch. It's up and in. Perfect right off the corner, and the 
Here's your famous Dave's Exmo. Yeah. And again, Nick went to a shorter bat because he kept hitting balls up on the label, and you can see right there yeah. that's where that ball was. Well, but again, my, you know, when we pitched every fourth day, uh, you know, Jim Cott, one of my dear friends, pitched 25 years. He used to always talk as Manny Act is going to come out to talk to Rod Vallone, and basically, pitching's feel and touch. I don't care how hard you throw. You've got to know how the ball comes out of your hand. Can you throw it out of the middle of the plate? Can you change speeds to some guys? Otherwise, you do what you do best if you're a fastball pitcher. And to me, going out there every fourth day is a lot easier than sitting around pitching every fifth or sixth day. So you, even though sometimes you'd probably be sore and you didn't have your best stuff, you had a better feel for it. Yeah, and you'd make better pitches, and that's how you could pitch through the lineup four or five times. Aubrey Huff hasn't gotten the ball out of the infield, so he might welcome the sight of a left-hander of alone here. Jordan Zimmerman had him grounding out to third, second, and fouling out to third. But I love that Jordan Zimmerman attacked him with fastballs. And as Jim was saying, this is one of the best fastball hitters in, in the American League. Out over the plate. And uh, he was able to early on get the ball away from him right on the corner and then work the inside part of the plate. I mean, Aubrey Huff led that ball. As they almost tried to pick Jones off. Adam said he was going to try to steal more bases in spring training, but so far only one. But nobody had more extra base hits in the American League last year than Aubrey Huff. Interesting matchup here. I'm sure Manny Acta had those numbers. Might have been a reason for that visit. <laughs> yeah. Now he is under 200 against lefties this year. But we're only what? Two fifths of the way, or maybe two sixths of the way. Good breaking ball there. Yeah, had him reaching, trying to pull that outside pitch. Ronnie Belliard takes care of it. It'll be the pitcher spot, top of the order ahead for the Nats. 2 2 in the middle of the eighth. Southwest Airlines, low fares, no hidden fees. By Firestone, a tradition of innovation. And by Northrop Grumman, the information systems powerhouse. Well played ball game, well pitched so far. Orioles have dominated in the hit column, but it's a 2-2 affair. And the Nats will have the pitcher spot due up. Willie Harris will hit against the Baltimore 25 year old right hander Jim Johnson sinker baller with a big curveball and a changeup. But you know this year a little bit different. He's only given up uh, runs in four of his 18 appearances. Three runs twice though. Uh, two runs one of the other times and then a single run. But he can sink the ball with the best of them. That the problem has been fastball command. So he can't get ahead to use that curveball. And then when you come into the tie game. You usually don't want to get beat on your secondary or tertiary pitches. Willie Harris, one of the most valuable part time players in the National League. He's a spot starter who's only pinch hit four times this year. One of four in that department. Just had a real nice series against Pittsburgh. They had five hits in that series. 
Ooh, and leans back for the high fastball, which has been called a strike pretty consistently by Bill Welke tonight. Well, the amazing thing is that the Orioles have had 17 pinch hits all year, and the Nationals 72. You get you a little difference between the American League with the DH. Not a lot of opportunities. Some of the final numbers on Jordan Zimmerman 65 strikes out of 97 pitches, but 17 first pitch strikes. I mean, that's pretty impressive by a 22 year old kid. You could be 32, 12, 10. <laughs> I don't care. I tell you what. And I've seen him pitch, and you, you have to like his stuff, and you like the fact that they're giving him an opportunity. And, you know, that's how I started. That's how you started. Yep. Somebody says, you know what, son, you're going to the big leagues. Sees the opportunity, and it, He's going to be special. Seven strikeouts, one walk in those seven innings. Threw a double play ball. Two and two to Willie Harris, who's just like having a leadoff man up here. And he swings right through that, taking a big swing at a fastball. Jordan Zimmerman, you saw him long toss in there to get ready, and boy, he had a great fastball cooking all night, 93 to 95. You can hear the pop of the gloves. Then there's that great out pitch, a great slider, just drops off the table. And he enjoyed having some of those Oriole pitchers as strikeout victims, too. A little bit different. If you're in the American League, you get that uh, professional DH as a hitter. Well, 15 strikeouts in this game already, at least on my card. <laughs> that doesn't mean it's right, but still a lot of punch outs. And that's what good pitching will do. Christian Guzman 0 for 3 tonight with a punch out and a couple of balls on the infield. Well, Jim Johnson came up as a starting pitcher through the minor leagues, actually had some success, but not at the major league level. And it's, it's kind of interesting, Rob, is that they lengthened his stride. And a lot of times if you're tall, you want to get your foot down to get over your front leg. He lengthened his stride, and all of a sudden everything fell into place. Wasn't he about, he's about 6'6", six, six, though. 6'5", six, yeah. So, yeah. I mean... I mean, he's got That's nasty kind of, stuff, and it's right. an easy 93 to 96. I guess uh, Randy St. Clair told Debbie Taylor before the game that they had Jordan Zimmerman throw about 15 extra pitches, but they didn't simulate an inning, but he did throw a little bit longer to be maybe a little bit tired or stretched out before tonight's start. Ooh, that's close on one and two fastball. Well, everybody, hands. Yeah, everybody's making a big deal about having guys stand down there and simulate what you're trying to do when you get in the game. To me, that makes total sense. And the Orioles hitting instructor Terry Crowley used to always come down because he was a pinch hitter. He wanted to stand there. I wanted somebody standing there. It made me better. And it. That ball had some nasty spin on it and still getting him at first. Huff on the throw to the covering Johnson. <laughs> Aubrey Huff they made a couple so. of errors down there this year. That was bang bang. Nobody from the Washington side is arguing. Again, it looked pretty routine, but you know you do this all spring long. But if you don't cover the bag, he's going to be safe. Well, that ball comes up, hits him in the heel of the glove. Then he <laughs> looks at Johnson to try to see where he is getting to the ground, getting oh. to the base, and then he doesn't pick up the ball. But that was close. Here's Nick Johnson. But if you do not get to the bag, you can't reach like a yep. first baseman. Otherwise, he's going to be safe. Might have been safe anyway. Well, two bang bang plays tonight. One at second, one at first, both going Baltimore's way. And the bases are empty with two outs here in the eighth. Nick Johnson, one for two, a base hit, a run, and a walk. Typical night for him, who came in with the seventh best on base average in the National League at 435. So he's flirting with 450 now on his on base percentage. Well, he gives you such a great at bat. He's so patient. He's going to make you throw his pitch that he can hit. And if you try to get him away, he's just going to slap it into left field. Well, when he came up with the Yankees, it seemed like always hitters counts. You know, had that reputation coming through the minor leagues. Just a matter of really staying healthy, which has been a problem. Yeah, he only played 38 games last year, and he's already gone past that for this year. And now because he's a free agent at the end of the year, a lot of teams are talking about trying to trade for him, especially the injury to Carlos Delgado up in, in New York. But I don't know if you want to trade him within the division. Well, I know two teams that wouldn't. The Phillies and the Braves. Maybe the Nats situation is a little different than them. Oh, yeah. We're, we're rebuilding. They're contending. It's pretty good at... Uh, 
home this year 377 a homer and nine ribbies. One and two from Johnson and two Johnson and he slices it straight back. Nick Johnson this year has struck out 27 times and walked 24. Ryan Zimmerman credits Nick Johnson with a lot of that 30 game hitting streak he had. Nasty breaking ball two and two. Well he's got a good one he doesn't yes, throw he it does. over very often. And, and, that, and that'll he, make and yeah. that'll make hitters lay off of yep. it if he can never throw for a strike. You know, I'm sure their scouting report says hey heavy sinker 93 to 96 occasional change up can't command his curveball. But again with two strikes you're not looking for anything but the fastball anyway. Nick Johnson locked up 87 on that ball sinking down and away two strikeouts in the eighth Orioles have Mora Reimold and Moeller up ahead 2 2 into the ninth. Nation's capital as this one goes quickly now into the top of the ninth inning in a 2-2 game on Sunday, May 24th. The Nats finish up a three-game series with the O's and celebrate the Nationals Dream Foundation. Show your support, make a $5 donation. You can text DC to 90999 and help improve the lives of children and families across the Washington Capital Region. That'll be Sunday afternoon. Jason Bergman may be the most meaningful appearance of his season. <laughs> most of the games he has pitched in to this point have been when the Nats were way ahead or way behind. He's been up and down a couple of times. And that's a good slider he starts Melvin Mora with here in the ninth. Interesting season last year, guys. Bergman was 2 and 11 with a 5.09. Tim Redding, a starter, won double figure games with an ERA almost identical. Maybe we don't talk often enough about run support. Yep. And Boy. more is aboard for the second time tonight. Get to the Nissan National Tent event. Great deals on reliable vehicles. Look closer. Nissan delivers. And for the Orioles, it was Nolan Rimo back in the second with two outs. Fastball up in the zone, and boy, did he kill it. Well, he did a 3 1 fastball, yep. and of course, you know, his first major league home run. He did, as Lou Montanez will come in and run for Melvin Mora. But what Rimo did was he's the only guy in the history of Mariano Rivera's career that hit his first major league home run off him. Wow. <laughs> so he said, I used to watch him on TV and all the postseason games, and when I got to hit him, took him over the center field fence. Of course, he can do that. I mean, he did it nine times in 31 games at AAA. Had a great spring. One of the best spring training hitters for the Orioles. But not a roster spot. And this ball playable right field line, but a long way to go for Adam Dunn. And he won't be able to get to that foul ball. Well, they say you give up your 
bat for a hit. Sometimes you give up your trousers for a catch. <laughs> Oh, it could be a seismic event when he hits the turf. Yeah, because he's a big man. <laughs> and I had seen him play and had a chance to meet him down at the batting cage. And as you mentioned, soft spoken until yes. he puts a bat in his hand. And yep. Everything changes. Oh, two here. And a pop up on the infield. Ronnie Belliard for the first down. And what really upset me because I've known Adam for many, many years going when he played for Cincinnati and he was with Griffey Jr. He's just a great kid and then then you get some people who've never met him and they say that that he doesn't really care about the game. This kid loves playing baseball. He chose it over football to go to Texas and play quarterback. That's how much he loves baseball and he dives all over the place and he plays. He's got a big heart and then you know people accuse you of not playing hard because you're a soft spoken guy when you're not playing the game. Manny Acta. Well, he didn't get to DH tonight, but he will PH. Pinch hit here in the ninth, and that's Ty Wigginton. Well, you talked about Albers having that great sinking fastball. That's Jason Bergman. I talked to him today, and, and I said, what's your best pitch? He said, sinking fastball. I said, then go out there and throw a lot of it. <laughs> And what's he throw? The hanging slider or cutter that gets hammered foul. You know, I watched the pitch last year, and you could see, I mean, 2 and 11, as you mentioned, what he got about 2.84 runs per nine innings, the lowest amount in the National League. But his ERA, the second half of the game, the, the season, was he was 1 and 5 versus 1 and 6. It's like, went all the way up to seven runs a game. Bergman's got it. Throws to second. Belliard turns it. And this game is going to the bottom of the ninth. Guess who's up to lead off? He's one for three with a two run homer tonight. Ryan Zimmerman is the Nats' new RBI leader. It'll be Zimmerman, Dunn, and Willingham in a 2 2 game. By Kawasaki. Save big during Kawasaki's green light event. See your dealer today. And by GE. Imagination at work. 2 2 game, bottom of the ninth inning coming up. Jim Johnson still on the mound for the Orioles. We'll give you their defensive changes in a moment. Time for you to text in your vote for the ATT player of the game. Tonight's candidates A. Reimold with the homer Nolan going deep in the second inning Jordan Zimmerman seven strong innings for Washington and Ryan Zimmerman the game tying two run homer text in your vote have your voice heard a B or C text it to five one eight six two Ty Wigginton stays into play third base and after the Orioles hit for Moeller Greg Zahn is catching and batting fifth. Here's Zimmerman. So you're down to one position player, Robert Andino. They got the right guys coming up, as they did in the eighth inning last night when they came from behind to win. Strung together four singles in that inning last night. But the, it's the way they did it. You know, Guzman, you know, he probably hit the most conventional ones, and then all of a sudden Johnson reached out, single to center. Zimmerman poked one into right field and then done into center. So it was quality at bats by the heart of the lineup. How about this team? 10 out of 11 games, five or more runs scored, and we won two of them. 
I mean, that's that's tough, and a lot of it's been the bullpen just trying to get some outs at the end of the ball game. We keep winning the first seven innings. We can't keep uh, we keep losing the last the, the last six outs. Well, again, that, that could all change. Uh, you guys were talking last night about the fact they what what four and four on the West Coast trip, yep. and then all of a sudden came back. To, they couldn't outscore the Phillies. And then Pirates won the first three. Everything changes when you get good pitching. And they certainly got that tonight. Two and one to Zimmerman. Just off the plate. And that outside corner disappearing. <laughs> Has a way of doing that, we have found out. <laughs> it's almost, it's in almost the late extinct innings. in the major leagues. <laughs> yeah, really. The shipping box becomes a shoe box in the eighth and ninth innings of that strike zone. Here's a three and one to Zimmerman. He's pumping. Oh, he was going long ball right there. And the count's full. Yeah, I don't think you want to get into three and one counts to Ryan Zimmerman, no. but if you're going to, it helps to have pretty good movement on your fastball. And when Johnson's on his game, so again, here's your home run swing. Walk off. That ball just sinks underneath it. That's one of the few times you'll ever see his I, head move during yeah, a swing. And I haven't seen him take a hack like that in a while. Three and two now. That was a defensive swing. Handled by Johnson, one out. Adam Dunn next, and then Josh Willingham. Get your family fun pack tickets. Bring the whole gang out to the ballpark. There's one this Sunday. You can get upper right field, $14. Lower left or right reserve tickets for $25. A hot dog, non-alcoholic drink. And chips and a minimum of two tickets per purchase. Pre-game autographs. Kids run the bases after the game. 888-632-NATS or nationals.com. Adam Dunn's 0 for 2 with a walk. 12 homers on the year. I was listening to him over at Walter Reed talking to some of the patients, and he was saying, when the guy was saying, hey, you're having a great year, 12 home runs, he goes, not, not lately. He goes, I've been getting myself out a lot. I mean, very humble young man. Adam Dunn knows he's four for his last 30. Yep. May not know the exact yep. number. Yep. He just doesn't think things are going that great right now. Well, yeah, they, you know, I was talking to Rick Eckstein, the hitting instructor, and I said, how do you deal with a guy that walks a lot, hits a lot of home runs, strikes out a lot? And he said, we go back and we try to get the best of his at-bats and try to make adjustments. That's why they play a shift. From about 50 feet into the outfield, wow. Brian Roberts throws him out. And again, if you're a sinker baller, the home run guy, he's trying to, he's a fly ball guy. I mean, he hits yep. so many balls in the air. Coming into the night, 48 balls in the air, 30 on the ground. But you go to your strength, which is sometimes his strength, but the sinker, and it looks like the right fielder threw him out, but that's Brian Roberts. We'll give Ryan an outfield assist for that. Yeah. But the toughest thing right there, and, and we talk about this all the time, lefty's trying to take that sinking fastball to left field. For him, he's a dead pull guy. They've got the shift on. He's trying to pull a sinker, a hard sinker that's going away 93 miles an hour. And as a pitcher, I'm thinking, I'm going to get a ground ball with this, no matter who's standing up there. So that, that's what I talk about with, with some of the kids today. I don't know if they visualize that, but that's the way I used to pitch, that I could see that before I even threw the pitch, that that's what the guy's going to do with it. Yeah, man, you know, I used to come out and watch guys take batting practice. Manny Acton was talking about trying to get his pitching staff to say, hey, you know what, even if you come out and watch BP, every pitch you throw is not hit for a base hit. But I wanted to see if the guys are high ball hitters, low ball hitters can't hit it in BP. How are they going to hit it when they don't know what's coming? Willingham on an 0-2 pitch. Laces one to center. Jim Johnson gave him too much of the plate on that one. And for Washington only, it's fourth hit of the night. All right, so what hitter gave you uh, the most fits? Oh, there were a lot. One guy's getting in the Hall of Fame. Well, in fact, two guys are getting in the Hall of Fame. Ricky Henderson probably hit over 400. And then Jim Rice hit nine home runs, but only hit like 216. And eight of them were solos. I don't know about you, Rob, but there are some guys that were better than I was. So I, once you understand that, you kind of. <laughs> you tipped your hat. Yeah, and you just pitched for them very carefully. Ronnie well, that's, that's the thing. You know, I pitched to a lot of Hall of Famers. And I, I look at look back at their numbers, and, and I'm like, okay, so Tony Gwynn was 5 for 18 off me. That's a pretty good percentage. You know, he was 5 for 18 off a lot of guys. Probably more like 10 for 18 off a lot of guys. And I never really thought, okay, I'm overmatching him. There's a lot of times I was like, you know what? If I hit this spot, maybe Tony will get himself out right here. And with eight batting titles, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> you know? 
Going to the belly yard. They're keeping the ball away from him. And he revolutionized uh, watching videotape on guys, though. I mean, he had your number because he watched you a hundred times before he took an at-bat off you on videotape. And I think every the Orioles know what, what Belliard's trying to do because he hit a walk-off against them last year off George Sherrill. On a Sunday afternoon, yeah, yes, great, he did the great high ball hitter. You know, he's looking for a ball he can jerk. Jim Johnson's trying to get into an area of the plate where even if he would get a base hit, it would be minimal. 0 2, Belliard way off the plate. Why not throw it out there? He just missed. And you could tell by Johnson's reaction, he was about to head for the dugout. This is right on the black 0 2, very nice sinking fastball back across the plate. Didn't get the call. I'd like to have that. That's a nice pitch. <laughs> yeah, it's a That's breaking a breaking ball Aldridge over his right. head. He even backed up with the height of it, 2 2. Yep, how do you duck slowly? There's our <laughs> Exmo camera telling you. <laughs> it's still effective. No. It, it may be just a breaking ball, but it's still effective. I think Bob you had this number last night at Willingham when they were thrown over there. He doesn't have a lot of stolen bases career. No. And Belliard has to swing at that one. Slow roller to short is Turris. And this game is on to extra innings. Been a quick moving affair because of the pitchers all night long. Tenth inning straight ahead. the Orioles and the guy in the white jersey will be rooting for Ross Detweiler no decision his major league debut five nights ago coverage begins at 630 Nats extra on Masson HD and O's extra on Masson 2 top of the 10th Jason Bergman still pitching Cesar's turns takes a strike yeah they're trying to take the bun away because it's a pretty good scouting report because he will bun or at least said he only did about eight or nine times last year with the Cardinals but if it gets on, then all of a sudden, with 24 steals last year, the ability to turn a single into a double. I was going to ask you, you know, Hall of Famer to be Jim Rice had all those home runs, but when he would say get a hit off you, did you consider that a victory sometimes? Well, I, you know, I I first heard about Jim Rice, Jim Fry, who was our first base coach, would go on to manage Kansas City to a World Series. They would lose to the Phillies in '80, and then he would manage the Cubs and. He was managing down in uh, Venezuela and I uh, he said you know they got this big African American guy to keep sitting fly balls over the right center field fence. <laughs> and I said what's his name. He said Jim Rice. And then he came to the big leagues and 
He hit him over the right field fence. <laughs> There's your walk. No, oh, that's not good. And that's what our bullpen does best. They like to walk people. And here's the thing, not only the walk, it's the number eight hitter with Felix P.A., the Orioles' lone remaining left-handed batter coming into pinch hit. And then you're dealing with Brian Roberts, who has swung the bat well tonight. Well, let's see if Felix can butt. Because that's going to be his job. Well, and you have speed plus more speed and some more speed with Roberts, Jones, and then Marcakis. So you get in a situation where you're trying to get a double play to get out of the inning. It'll be hard. The Orioles, by the way, three sacrifice bunts the entire year. Two of them by his tourists, one by Melvin Mora. And Manny Act is going to his bullpen here. And it's really, and I'm sure Manny would tell you the same thing. It's uh, Baymo's going to come in. It, it's not the walk, it's how you walked him. Joe Bimel on his way in relief while the Orioles have the lead run on base. Here, Nats further into their bullpen. Let's update you on the voting for our AT&T player of the game. And right now, Jordan Zimmerman is carrying a few more states than Rymold and Ryan Zimmerman. All right, who's the red state? Who's the blue state? <laughs> well, tonight it's a question of red or orange. Red or orange? Oh, man, my brother grew up an Orioles fan. He loves the Orioles. To wear all those hats with the birds. You know, on Jim, this is the same man who came to D.C. and said he was a Dallas Cowboy fan. Hey, hey. What's wrong with that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I, and don't, I don't clarify worry. It. I'll get a police escort the for both of you. The Roger Staubach era back well, you then. Know. Would, you hey, know. well, I mean, I was a, uh, well, I was actually a Redskins fan because our former owner, Edward Ben Williams, the late Edward Ben Williams, was part owner of the Redskins. And he left me very nice tickets. <laughs> <laughs> well, that would help. Yep. Felix P.A. against Joe Bimel lays down a good bunt. Hey, if I get some nice Redskin tickets, maybe I'll become a Redskins fan. And yeah, that's when they had the, uh, that's when they played at RFK. We didn't have the capacity they have now. Top of the order now, Brian Roberts, two for four. And the Orioles execute perfectly their fourth sacrifice of the year. Yeah, Manny Acta brings in the lefty. You know, Brian Roberts, a better hitter from the other side of the plate. Not that he can't hurt you from this side. Just gets so many more at bats that way. So, 129 at bats yeah. left handed versus 41 from this side. And Roberts from the right side hitting 293. He's 12 for 41. Belly are jockeying with Isturis to keep him close at second. And then Bimo will help out by turning around. A lot of hitting room on the right side, and Bimo likes to work the ball away from right-handed batters. That's why Nick Johnson's playing 20 feet off the line, maybe more. He comes down and in with the first one and misses. There's the right side. By the way, Joe Bimo over the recent years has faced in the last three years, about 
three right-handed batters for every lefty he has faced. That ball is pulled over to Zimmerman. That'll freeze the runner. And two outs. Bringing up Adam Jones, but it's interesting because Rob and I were speculating that maybe Bimo was working more against right-handers here than he had before. But over 06, 07, 08, 480 right-handed batters, 310 lefties. So he was more than just a situational guy. Yeah, and how did he do against him? Because I think Manny Act has got to make a decision here with two outs. Do I pitch to Jones or do I pitch to Marquecas? Mm -hmm. And Marquecas, and they're going to pitch to Marquecas, which is no easy task. Well, I mean, I this is obviously your percentage move. This year, though, righties are hitting 350 off of Joe Bimel and 296 left-handed. So, I mean, it's with his big breaking ball, I'd, I'd rather go. And, and the thing was, when I was a short reliever, you get a lot of pinch hitters. You get a lot of guys that have been sitting around all night, you know, waiting for that one at bat, and they get Joe Bimel and they're right-handed, and he throws that huge curveball and strikes your butt out. Of course, the, the batting average should be better against him, but you want him to be able to get the lefties out. That should be his number one job. This is interesting, Rob. Last year in 53 games, he pitched against a right-hander, 263. 62 games against left-handers, 278. He was better against right-handers. Battle of the Beltways Nationals Park in our nation's capital. Bob Carpenter right now with Rob Dibble and Debbie Taylor. Jim Hunter has been here for half the ball game. Amber Theo Harris roaming the ballpark as well. Johnny Holiday, Ray Knight out in our Nats Extra suite in left field. And we're pulling everything together with the Mass and family tonight for you for the Battle of the Beltways 2009. Two on, two out. Lefty, lefty matchup. Mark Hakus is 0 for 4. Yeah, he came into the game 255 against left handers. Now, last year he hit 297, hit 310 against right handers. Lifetime hitter almost 290 against left handed pitcher. Now he throws a fastball over the heart of the plate. He's gotten better every year against lefties, too. I think he had one home run against lefties in 07. He had five last year against lefties. I mean, it's, it's all about keeping that front shoulder in. And you can see his runners in scoring position numbers up there. I mean, the, the Orioles came in as a team hitting 300. That's fourth best in the league. I don't think either team has trouble scoring runs. I think we have trouble getting outs at the end of ball games. In fact, the Orioles came in with two of the top four hitters with runners in scoring position. Adam Jones at 407, Nick Markakis 404. You know, I was surprised, and certainly not to denigrate other than Johnson, nobody for the Nationals has a really an outstanding runners in scoring position, yet they're third in the National League in run score. Which kind of amazes me. Yeah, and a lot of different guys do that. Fastball, a delayed call by Bill Welke, who thought about it for a moment and then called strike two. Well, there's your pitcher's pitch right here. 1-1 one, one pitch track right there, right through the box. Through the box, spoken like a true ex-pitcher. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> I like Joe. Joe's got the great mullet going. Oh, that he does. <laughs> One and two to Marquecas. I never want to disseminate the umpires. Hadn't shaved for a day either. Oh, he's got he's got the whole reliever look going on. Got some tattoos. So now what a just like Al Lebowski, he's got to go behind the mound, kneel down, talk to the ball. I think he got a little bit of rosin. <laughs> I, I'm, I expect a big curveball right here. Mark Kakis, seven homers, 35 RBIs, and a 2-2 pitch. Up in, in, in a fastball got him. Orioles lead two. They've stranded seven. Bottom of the tent coming up and the last three hitters in the Washington order.
For those of you expecting a high scoring game, we are happy to disappoint you. Both teams pitching well. When it comes to tickets, Nats fans deserve Major League service. How about StubHub, official fan-to-fan -fan ticket marketplace of Nationals.com. Ross Detweiler, Koji Uwahara, tomorrow at 7. Sunday at 1.30, Chiron Martis and Brad Bergeson. Mass and HD all weekend long. Our friends from DC 50 join us on Sunday. And then the Nats are off to New York to play the Mets on Memorial Evening. Tuesday and Wednesday night games as well. And Nats Extra always a half hour before our airtime. Here we go. Josh Bard and Danny Baez takes over after two flawless innings by Jim Johnson. Yeah, Baez has been very good. Came off Tommy John surgery. And other than his last appearance uh, up in New York where he gave up four runs, I mean, he's almost been unhittable. You know, 93 to 95, good splitter, hard slider. A lot of ground balls. Josh Barr rolls it over. No problem for Roberts. And what the Yankees do so well, as most people in the American League know, is that they take pitches and they adjust so well. You know, their scouts will say, hey, you know, Baez got a great splitter, but he's not throwing first strike. So they take it and all of a sudden gets into hitters counts. And that's how they took advantage of Danny the other night in New York. Justin Maxwell 0 for 3 tonight. Playing against a team that he grew up in the neighborhood of. A young man from Maryland just called up this week. And considered the best pure center fielder in the organization. Numbers on the season three for 13 with an RBI in eight games. Three for three on the bases. He's a big guy at 6'5, 235 who can really run. 2-0 count. There's a sinking fastball. 3-0. Number nine spot due up in Austin Kearns. Struggling lately. But a big strong guy on deck. High strike. Well, I didn't call one low and right there. And you can see Greg Zahn drag it back into the zone. That's ball four. You have to drag that one on. on. Yeah. Drag that one back with both hands. <laughs> hey, I wanted to ask you a question a little earlier in the game, and now we're playing free baseball. <laughs> we asked you a question. Um, Matt Weeters. I said his last name right. Is it yes. Weeters? Former number one draft choice two years ago out of Georgia Tech. Do you think he could be learning just as much? At the major league level as he is right now in the minor leagues. Maybe oh, of even catching this young staff. Oh, yeah. And, and I think what they'll do is they'll bring him up. I mean, there's so many ways to look at it. Is he ready to pitch in the big league? Play in the big leagues as a catcher, switch hitter? You know, they, they say he's probably going to be a better offensive version of Jason Veritek and hope that he can catch as well as Jason. Better throwing arm, at least ability. Bigger guy at 6'5. It's kind of like a Joe Maurer with power. Exactly. Even though he's got eight home right. runs in like three yeah. weeks. Well, yeah, I mean he's hit more already this year than he did all last year in about 72 at bats. That's ridiculous. But he had a grand slam and two doubles last night, six RBIs. Of course, else, how else do you beat the White Sox 20 to one? But you would think this would be a running situation. Mueller, who started the game, they were 0 for 12 when he tried to throw people out. Greg's on a little bit better. Well, Next coming off shortly. Yeah, coming off uh, elbow surgery. So, yeah, we have trouble running the bases. I mean, stealing wise. They had 16 steals, but they've been caught 11 times now, including the pickoff of Willingham earlier tonight. 0 oh, and 1 to Kearns, who's 4 for his last 33. By the way, in extra innings this year, the Orioles are 1 and 1. Both of those on the road. The Nationals are 0 and 5 and 0 and 4 here at home. Here's the 1 1 to Kearns. I don't know if you can beat Dew to win a extra inning game at home. Well, you got good speed on first. An extra base hit will certainly test the Royals' ability to, to run them down. They are playing much deeper. Austin Kearns. 
Well, that's that splitter. Yeah, at 88. He, he needs to cut yeah. down on that, though. He's got to try to drive the ball up the middle right here. Just need a base hit, not a home run. Yeah, tell that to a hitter in extra innings. <laughs> Jim, we've marveled at that over this year that as soon as you get past that ninth inning, everybody's jacking. Everybody wants to be the hero, I guess, but last night we did it with a bunch of singles and won the game. Four of them. Because it was the eighth inning. Kearns rolls that one over. He'll have to hurry. Double play. And this game into the 11th. Each team with a pair of twin killings tonight. It remains 2-2. Nationals Park. The Cal Ripken Senior Collegiate Baseball League hosting the Valley Baseball League. It's the Mid-Atlantic Classic July 15th. Regency Furniture Stadium in Waldorf. Stars of tomorrow. You can see it all live on Mass and HT. 705. Home Run Derby 530. Admission free. They will gladly accept your donation. Log on to Ripken Senior. That's SR College Baseball .org. In the top of the 11th, Huff Montanez and Reimold and the Nationals will go with their fifth pitcher of the night right hander Kip Wells. Well, there are the numbers and obviously anytime you walk 14 and 18 innings. You are not commanding the ball. And that kind of. It was kind of interesting when I when I talked to Stan Caston today I said well number one drafts coming up you get the, the drafts coming up you have the number one pick. And he made a good point. He said, listen, you know, I've seen Kip Wells throw 95, 96, full host, guys in the National League, all over that stuff. So Strasburg, who's at least figured to be the number one guy. And there's your first pitch fastball. So again, I, I saw Kip Wells throw a couple of years ago when he was with the Cardinals. And I watched him for 15 minutes with Dave Duncan, who's the pitching coach. Marvelous, one of the best pitching coaches in baseball. Actually caught for the Orioles one year. And I never saw him command his fastball. Cutter, curveball, but how about low and away? That ball out over the plate. Ronnie Belliard throws out Aubrey Huff. And not Montanez, but the catcher Greg Zahn will be next. Montanez ran for Mora back in the ninth, and then Zahn came in to take over that lineup spot. Now the Orioles have never had more than one hit in an inning except for the third tonight. But Roberts doubled and Jones singled and the Nationals have only done that once as well there. Johnson singles Zimmerman Homer in the fourth pitchers are outstanding tonight. And here's the 37 year old veteran Greg Zahn who had 237 in 86 games for Toronto last year. He's with the Orioles back in 95 96. Stops yeah 13 for his last 37 so you know started out very slowly he was hitting 118. In the air, left center. Big gaps in this ballpark. Justin Maxwell told me the other day he loves running out here. 
And Rymel. Hey, by the way, some team ERAs are really coming down tonight. <laughs> Nationals the highest in the National League. Orioles in the American League. And then the Phillies in there, but they've got the offense and the defense to compensate. Indians have struggled all year. Minnesota usually more solid than a 5-1-6. Well, it's unexpected by the bullpens. Our starters are pretty tight. Your starters are probably pretty good. No. But no? Okay. Um, <laughs> our, our bullpen's ERA is up near seven. And I know yours is up near six. So I, I, I figured if it got to the bullpens, it could blow out. But obviously these guys are, are ready for each other. Yeah, the Orioles came in at 544, which is 12th out of 14 teams. And then as you meant, the Nationals, six and a half runs a game. That's 16th out of 16 teams in the National League. Well, statisticians all over the country are scratching their heads right now, searching for this game on their satellites. I already told you, when these two teams get together, throw out the records and the ERAs. <laughs> Somebody said the other day, <laughs> when the Nats and the Orioles get together, throw out the ERAs, please. <laughs> well, again, and I think right here, I mean, we've seen all night long with maybe a couple of pitches, Guys that have pitched real well. They have made their pitches. They've executed. Anybody can sit in a meeting. The many actors certainly knows that. You can talk about how you want to get a guy out. Can you go out and do it? That ball rifled foul by Nolan Reimold. Well, I tell you, if you're Kip Wells, you throw a sinker down and in, and he smacks it foul, and he swung through a really good slider. It all comes down. Can you execute that same pitch? Because if you throw a guy. A slider that's not as quite as good as the first one and he sees it and it's in the middle of the plate and he's a home run type of guy and that's what Reimold is. The ball can get hit a long way. One two delivery. There's the slider but he left it up. Yep and he what did he do. He got lucky he fouled yep. it off. That's a ball a little bit more out over the plate and it gets launched. Well, yep. right over the top of the zone right there. Got lucky because I think Reimhold was uh, looking fastball, kept his arms back, but exploded on the breaking ball. Nationals catchers lead the National League in replacing shin guards this year, Ooh. sliding for breaking <laughs> balls. I mean, Will Nievis. And Jesus Flores, they just have welts up and down their forearms from all the pitches they block. And Flores hasn't played in two weeks. His having his swellings haven't gone down yet. There's Will Nieves. And a 2-2 here in the air to left. Josh Willingham under it. And the top of the order is coming up for Washington in the bottom of the 11th. Christian Guzman, the league's leading hitter, but he's 0 for 4 tonight. Nick Johnson and Ryan Zimmerman to follow in a 2-2 game. Um. For the Orioles, 2-2, bottom 11. Christian Guzman hasn't been held hitless often this year.
Came into this ball game hitting safely 17 of his last 18 starts and leading the National League at 373. He's at 362 now. Guzman will occasionally muscle up and hit a line drive out of a ballpark, but he's a line drive machine when he's seeing the ball well. But he's bouncing it again, right side. Roberts. Everybody's in pull mode right now. Well, I know the advanced scouts did a terrific job of scouting the <laughs> Orioles and Nationals hitters. Well, I know the Orioles advanced scout was here for the last week. <laughs> so he did a great job. Nick Johnson next. Yeah, I think it's whoever's going to hit a double down the opposite line and. And somebody's just going to get a little doink over the infield. Now, did you ever start in the big leagues? I know you started in the minor. No, league. Never. never started in the big leagues. Because yeah. a lot of times in the near one run ball games, and or I guess we can take this extrapolated all the way to the extra innings, that it, it, it does turn to something like an extra base hit or maybe a little looper. Nick Johnson didn't get him. Ball well, comes into the it. glove of Jones. 390 feet away, two outs. Well, I'll tell you something, Bob and Rob. It, this this park does smell, play a lot bigger than Camden Yards. Oh yeah, especially in right and right center. Yeah. The middle of the scoreboard out there is 375. Oh yeah, that was a fork ball right there, down in the zone. Adam Jones was pretty worried about it, blowing two bubbles on his way to that ball. I guess he's relaxed out there. Here's Zimmerman what one for it? four I with think a two he's run 23 over. years old, isn't he? Yep. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just came from like his high school prom. <laughs> you know, the three of us are going to have to announce a lot of games <laughs> to outlast Jones, Zimmerman, and Mark Kikas. <laughs> <laughs> well, Martis is what, 22? Man. I think Ross Detweiler, was he about 21, 22? Well, I talked to him today. He doesn't shave yet. <laughs> He's thinking about it. I saw him. He, oh, he totally hasn't gotten a razor on that face yet. You know how you get to, like those long curly hairs because you haven't had a whisker yet. And Zimmerman, we forget he's still only 24. He's 24. Won't be 25 till September. 2-0. Look out here. He was trying to hammer that 2-0 pitch. Good play by his tourist to throw him out. And it's going to be at least a dozen in our nation's capital tonight as far as innings. The Washington Nationals battle of the beltways Ty Wigington stepping up to the plate. It's 2-2. Here's a graphic Jim on our young guys Martis 22 Zimmerman 22 Detweiler 23. I apologize Ross and Craig Stamen through yesterday 25 years young and even uh, Scott Olson who's on the disabled list is 25 years old. So we've, we've got a lot of youngsters up here and what do they all have in common? They're young and they throw strikes and John Lannon I think is 25. He's the elder statesman in the rotation. 
And of course I remember him from last year. He beat the Orioles either three to two or two to one in Baltimore. Wigginton hit into a one four three double play last time. That was engineered by Bergman to end the top of the ninth. So Kip Wells his second inning of work. Yeah, don't make a mistake with this guy with a fastball. Yeah, really good high ball hitter. Great slider over but low and he thought it was a strike until it was too late. Well, again, just great I mean, downward tilt. Ball goes down out of the zone. Not flat, not hittable. And if he does it, he's going to hit a ground yeah. ball. Even though Ty did hit a double with one hand down the left field line in Yankee Stadium last night on a slider, but it wasn't a good one. Down, but just didn't break well. Those are good numbers for Kip. Well, again, we you know we when we show you the Northman North uh, North Grumman box. That's kind of where Wigginton likes it. You know, up and out over the plate. So you want to be under that box. Yep. Or in out of it. 23 <laughs> homers for Houston last year when he hit 285. <laughs> Opposite field no, in his go. tracks. Adam Dunn drifting for the ball near the track. One out. You got a man there. Big man. Four straight for Wells. The last three in the air. Getting down to the bottom of the order again. Cesar is Turris. And as Jim mentioned earlier, Robert Andino <laughs> is now the only guy remaining on the bench. And that was right at the top of the box. But it was out and away. Off balance, Wigginton didn't have enough power to put it out to right. Orioles have not filled the on deck circle yet. Is Turris 0 for 3 with a walk? Yeah, you don't want to walk this guy. You want to make him hit his way on. A shortstop that once played for our buddy Buck Martinez when he managed the Blue Jays. Buck was not happy when they traded his Torres <laughs> to the Dodgers. Where he won a gold glove. Yeah. I worked with Kevin Kennedy for four years. Um, and he loved this kid. So he's one of the best fielders in the big leagues. They broke up that double play tandem out there in L.A. On a fastball down low, Guzman ranges, throws! Got him! <laughs> Christian Guzman showing lots of range and a very strong arm. Two outs. Well, what do you have? The fifth best range of all National League shortstops last year? Here's why. Not only do you got to catch it, then yeah. you got to spin around and to make an accurate throw. Oh, that was a kind of running throw. out towards center field. I'm always amazed when guys do this though. That's that's the beauty of baseball. And by the way, Danny Baez is batting here after pitching two innings. And you played with a great <laughs> friend of mine, one of the most wonderful people, Mark Blanger. Oh yep. Blade. Well, the blade is short. And had Aparicio before him. Yep. Oh. And then Cal after him. Baez didn't look real interested in that fastball. He's 0 for 3 career. <laughs> Yeah, he's not real comfortable right now being up there. Nice probably, looking, nice looking gloves. Yeah, he probably bar borrowed the gloves, the bat, and the helmet. Yep. See, look at Next contact. Oh, and he's going to get a hit. Oh, yeah. Great First step. major league hit for Danny Baez. A grown man hit that ball. <laughs> and that's not only a base runner, but it's also Brian Roberts gets a chance to bat here in the 12th inning. Yeah, it's the first Oriole hit since what back in the ninth. And this is a line drive in the box score tomorrow. It hits off the front of the plate and just dies right there. He got out of the box well. Yes, he did. Kip tries to let it go foul, and Zim has no play on it. You couldn't have rolled it there underhand better than that. He will treasure that baseball forever. Well, that's much better than I did. I was over my first 20 over yeah. five years. That was a long drought. You know, <laughs> Dibs, you just have to get more at bats to get into a rhythm than that. Yep. Five years, that's 60 months. You had an at bat every three months. Yeah, but it was only because I did something bad. <laughs> Gave up a run, blew a save, did something bad. The manager says, You're going back out there for another inning. Roberts, two for five tonight. And now, Kip Wells. After the Nats had what they thought was an automatic 1 2 3 inning, has gone 2 0 on a dangerous hitter with a more dangerous guy on deck. Well, they play behind him. Mick Johnson moved behind him to take away the hole, but 
you can a pitcher score from first on a double? I think that's the question. He, if he happens to hit one. Drives it to left. Willingham. That is a fair ball. It bounces into the seats for a ground rule double. And with two outs, Baez was running hard. If that ball stays in play and rattles around at all, Baltimore would have scored. Second and third with Jones coming up. And if you walk in, you have a right-hander pitching to Marquecas. Right here is a fastball on the outside part of the plate. And it hits on the inside part of the fair line. Fair line. <laughs> that that time I was looking at line. the highlight box, so that's a great job by the camera crew. Brian Roberts, a doubles machine. We told you 51 last year, and that's 13 here in 09. Here's Jones, right handed matchup, so the Nats won him right here. He's two for four, an RBI and a walk. Jacks that ball. Fair ball into the corner. 4 2 Baltimore. Because a pitcher in his fourth major league at bat got a base hit. There you go. Good pitch to Baez, bad pitch to Roberts, and then a hanging slider to Jones. Yeah, and he's been killing the ball on the inner half all night. You don't want to get beat with a pitch in there, and he got it in there, and Adam Jones jacks it down the left field line. And again, what does what Kip Wells do best? Throws his fastball, and he gets maybe not beat because it's the Nationals get the hit in the bottom of the 12. But the Orioles go ahead on not a great pitch. But the Nationals are suffering from horrible karma in extra innings this year. George Sherrill popping up immediately to get ready to save a ball game. And that's up and in to Marquecas, who uncharacteristically is 0 for 5 tonight. You know, but when you look at the Florida series, when the Marlins came in here, first weekend of the season, all the other things that have happened to the Nationals, I guess a pitcher getting a 20-foot hit is the one thing that had not happened. No. Nope. Now it has. Well, we've pretty much seen every way we can possibly get behind in a ball game. Hadn't seen that one. But you guys know that that didn't beat you. <laughs> no. You know? I mean, that's, no, that's it was, really it what was, it comes down to. Right, and, and I agree with you. Yeah. The second and third with two outs, you should be able to pitch your way out of that. That's or when, that's when first you, and two outs. Well, but that's when you earn your money and you say, okay, you know, Brian Roberts slapped it the other way. He got a double. He's going to do that. But then now you got a power hitting righty up there. You got to try to get him out with two outs. With a first base open. So, you know, you either make a good pitch or, and not that Kip Wells tried to. Hang the slider, but again, I mean that's that's the difference. We sometimes pitching well and pitching poorly, and winning games and not winning it. And again, you guys have been talking about it all week. The Orioles certainly have struggled as they've lost four in a row coming into this game. When you turn it around, you start making better pitches. That ball hit hard, but right at Adam Dunn. Orioles get three consecutive hits after two outs, and Cheryl will face Dunn, Willingham, and Belliard.
And the Baltimore Orioles have overtaken the Nats here, four to two. Baez is still on the mound, at least to, to start the 12th. And guys in a safe situation, why would he be pitching against an Adam Dunn? Well, he's not. Why did the manager wait this long? We all knew what was happening. Yeah, I think George Sherrill, as you said, Rob, in between innings, just got up a little bit late. The Orioles coming up with the two runs, top of the 12th. And again, Sherrill, you know, he's been very, very good lately, made some mechanical adjustments, but lefties, as Dunn will lead it off, only two for 21. you got to have this matchup. He's your closer. Yeah, and that's happened before. I mean, you get up with two outs, you get maybe five to ten throws, you're still not loose. George wants to be loose. You want Dave Tremblay wants him to be loose, so you send Baez back out there as a decoy. But I think we all knew that uh, Cheryl was going to get done. George Cheryl on the year with seven saves. 31 last year for the Orioles when he won three games, 57 appearances. He was an all star last year. Are you kidding? He did a great job. Yes, he did. Two men were out when Danny Baez, because they didn't want to use Robert Andino and leave Baez possibly in the game. Look at that, about a 25-foot base hit. And then Brian Roberts, the ground rule double, the big hit by Jones, and suddenly, Jim, your ball club had two runs. Well, they did. And, uh, you know, again, part of it was luck. <laughs> I'd and, rather be lucky than good. Well, yep. It, well, I'd, I'd rather be lucky and good. And um, <laughs> I'd rather be good. And George Sherrill would like to throw yeah. strikes. You know, it's funny, they, they brought him in with about a four-run lead down in Texas. And he said, I never met a four-run lead that I liked. Because I call him Mr. Excitement. You know what? Yeah. Think, finally, a closer admits such a thing. You know, usually they say, well, that doesn't bother me. That's refreshing. But what George did, you know, early on in the year, and you know, came in his spring training, wasn't in the best of shape. Uh, you know, last year had some shoulder problems, didn't save a, a game after August 5th or 6th, and then really didn't pitch very much. The Orioles didn't play well. They went, what, 7-30 and 30 to end the season. But in the spring, you know, ball coming of his hand, not, not like it did last year. And then finally, he was swinging. I don't know. I, I tried not to swing my leg, but he was swinging his leg because he starts closed. And he made an adjustment where basically he starts closed now. All he has to do is pick up his leg. Arm gets up quicker, better angle of the plate, and his velocity has gone up maybe three to four miles per hour without trying to throw harder. Hmm. So again, I mean, this is a guy that used to be a setup guy. He got the chance. That's what he did uh, after coming through the independent leagues uh, with Seattle. Then came in the Eric Bedard trade along with Adam Jones and Chris Tillman. Yeah, he he paid his dues. 99 to 2003 in independent baseball before he got his shot. Got signed with Seattle Mariners, and within a year he was up in the major leagues in 04 with the Mariners. The lefty lefty matchup Adam Dunn 0 for 3 with a walk. Dunn shows bunt with the shift on because a little bunt down the third baseline would be a base hit, and the Nationals are down by two. Well, and Adam knows that even with a home run, we're still down a run, so he need he knows we need base runners right now. Well, David Ortiz with the Red Sox has done it. Maybe not lately. He was looking for that first home run, which he finally hit after what 149 at bats. George Sherrill, big curveball, and he's about deception. And there's the curveball. <laughs> Low two and one. He hides the ball. And hitters will tell you. Remember Sid Fernandez? Absolutely. Now, you know, I mean, I mean, Sid made 88 look like 108. Absolutely. Because he stepped 10 feet <laughs> towards you before he actually let go of the ball. And short armed the ball a little bit. Yeah. You just got to see Phil Hughes. Yeah. That kid's huge, and he short short arms the ball. Well, one of the great short armers pitched about seven no hitters and 5,500 innings or 5,500 uh, strikeouts. Nolan Ryan. Mm -hmm. What a good way to use your the big part muscles of your body. Nolan had, had, no had a great curveball yeah. too, though. Oh no, no, yeah. yeah. But I mean, his right. arm was was in, and right there, Adam Dunn just. Again, it's 88 looks a lot harder because you just don't pick it up. Right, and he's probably looking curveball, and he gets the 88 on the inner half. See the catcher set up away. Zahn's catching way off the plate, and that ball rides back across the plate. Freeze is done. Well, Dave Tremblay, who manages the Orioles, uh, the numbers did not support George Sherrill staying the closer. Mm -hmm. Righties were hitting 15 for 45. Lefties were 2 for 21. So he said, I'm going to kind of play it by ear, and all of a sudden, George's game got a lot better. 
Talk about a motivator. Pitch a lot better when your job depends upon it. I've said that before on the air about some of our relievers. If you're pitching for your job, you'll throw strikes. Willingham pops it up out behind second. Jones in is to us out. That ball's up long enough for the center fielder to make the call. The Orioles are one out away from first blood in the Battle of the Beltways this year. We're right back here tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. And by the way, if Baltimore holds on to win, the all-time interleague record between these two, now in its fourth year, would be Washington 10, Baltimore 9. Well, does Belliard ever bunt? Because Wigginton way back at third base. I'm going to have to say nope. negative on that. I think he'll be swinging to try to hit this ball on the beltway. Which will make it four to three. <laughs> Ronnie is swinging from his heels a lot at this stage of his career. One for four tonight. Eleven for fifty nine on the year. One ball, one strike. Both teams have played errorless baseball tonight. If the inning continues, Josh Bard. Two and two. Oh, the Orioles have pitched a great game. Four hits on this ball club. Four hits, two runs against the Nationals is doing a great job. They've out hit us 11 to four. Well, the Orioles, you know, they, they lost the last two games up in New York and they out hit the Yankees. But they got outscored something like 20 to 7. 27 to 9 in the three game series. Belliard takes it outside, walks as good as a hit for Washington here. Well, George Sherrill, I just told you, Mr. Excitement, he will walk some people. And that's what the Nats need. And he knows that. So he, he's going to give us a walk here with two outs, so just kind of. Well, I, I hope he doesn't, and he certainly hopes that. But Belliard lines out, game over. Three hours and six minutes to play 12 innings. And for the most part, 12 innings of well pitched and well played baseball by both of these struggling staffs coming in.